Ladies and gentlemen and in-betweeners, I'm your host, Alexander Rodriguez, here for On The Rocks Radio Show, where celebrities and cocktails mix tonight. We have reality TV star Josh Murray, the bad guy who can't settle down from The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise, and his podcast, Naked Chats. Is he really naked? We're going to find out. Also joining us is actress Jay Sue Park from my latest binge fest. That's not even a lie. Netflix, friends from college, obsessed. I'm not supposed to say obsessed, but I just did. Uh, we have martial arts expert and actor from this month's release of The Little Mermaid. Shirley MacLaine's in it, too. Yes. Uh, with my guest co-host, uh, uh, Chris Young. Sorry. With my guest co-host, my twisted sister and fellow podcaster, Eric Restivo. Whew. Raise a glass and let the drinks begin. <laughs> And most poor suckers are starving to death. I'd like to propose a toast. This is On the Rocks with Alexander, coming at you from Sunset Gower Studios in the heart of Hollywood, where I drink with your favorite celebrities, and we talk about fashion, entertainment, pop culture, reality TV, and, and that's about it. So pop a court, pour a glass, lean back, and enjoy On the Rocks every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Fasten your seat, though. It's going to be a bumpy night. It's going to be a bumpy night. I'm already, like, schvitzing yeah, over here. Yeah. We have so much sexiness <laughs> in this room. I don't know where to look for it. I'm like, look, 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 look. And then I look at curtain. Mainly oh, okay. over. Yeah, like, like, yeah, coming out. Of, no, it's all on this side of the room over here. All on that side of the room. Thank you. It's my Latin uh, heat. Uh, buttons, <laughs> buttons and bows and pantyhose. This is On the Rocks, the place we're too glam to give a damn. And unless you're a pregnancy test, take your negativity elsewhere. Oh. That's our motto for today. We're going to be positive. Ooh. I love Love that. I'm positive it's going to be a bumpy, a bumpy ride. <laughs> love that. Uh, thank you to our sober listeners for tuning in. We love you. Thank you for holding our hair back and driving us home. If drunk texting was a sport, I'd be an Olympian. Today, it's official. Pumpkin Spice is back on the market. Oh, my. Uh, the world of basic has come on back. Okay, but like, how many Angelinos are walking around sweating? Like, their makeup is sweating off, and I'm talking about the guys. And they're like, oh, I love this pumpkin spice. And it's like a little sip here. And they're like sweating, killing themselves. Do you guys like pumpkin Pumpkin spice? I love it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a don't. yoga mom without doing the it's yoga or being a mom. Me. It's too yeah. heavy. I can't I do like it. it. No. Yeah. I just well, like you're very coffee. organic though, right? You love everything like natural and organic. I do. I mean, pumpkin obviously is organic. Um, but, that's yeah. not, but like, it doesn't really taste like pumpkin. Like if you opened up a pumpkin, you would be like, oh, this is delicious. I know. <laughs> right. I know. You're so right. It, but it's like because the pumpkin spice is actually nutmeg yeah. and uh, ginger and all that. That's actually, they should just, but it's too long to print on all the labels. Right. 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 They right. can't it's, say it's all of that. Just, pumpkin. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, you're right. pumpkin doesn't taste like that. Yeah. And uh, more like straight guys like the pumpkin spice than they're willing to admit. Josh, I only had pumpkin spice meal replacement shakes before. Oh. So I've even had that kind well, of pumpkin he's spice. Too busy, <laughs> he's too busy drinking. Uh, everything else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> pumpkin spice I'm still vodka. On the right I'm now all the last week. <laughs> this is four nights in a row. It's my birthday yes. on Sunday and I'm still Happy sweating belated. out. Happy belated. Thank you. That's hey, why I'm drinking for you right now. Thank you. Cheers. Chris, are you a fan of pumpkin spice? Um, I've rarely ever drunk on sp pumpkin spice. I mean, I enjoy pumpkin pie, but not really a fan of pumpkin spice. Like, Please, I when was the last time you rarely... had pumpkin pie? I mean, uh, that was last year. That was last, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, that was last year of pumpkin pie. I was like, pie. two days ago? It's a year old, but oh well. <laughs> Still delicious. Uh, hello to our listeners around the nation on iHeartRadio, Universal Broadcasting Network, Player FM, Stitcher, TuneIn, Satchel, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Of course, we are on Facebook Live right now on Hillcrest Social San Diego, True Hi. FM in Ohio, hi, Ohio. Hi, and Ohio. nationally on Bear World Magazine. Rawr. Check out my weekly Bear World movie news, uh, movie reviews, and celebrity interviews. This week, we got Trouble in Tinseltown. Guardians of the Galaxy, part three, uh, on, it's put on hold indefinitely because I got rid of the director, but the A-list wow. actors are so busy, it's not like they can be like, oh, well, let's just do it a few months later. They got to do it now or it might not happen. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is the last film that they're all going to be in, and then it's going to be reboot with... Oh, yeah. so you're following yeah. this. We're, you're going to be following I'm this closely. I'm not the biggest like, comic book or right. superhero you, you've film. you seen the other two? <sighs> yeah, begrudgingly, though. I right. was excited for the first one uh -huh. um, because it was different. Like Deadpool is, I like because yeah. it's so different. It's not like here to save the day, you know. Um, and but Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. 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 
So you're um, not Tulsi really a Marvel really fan, feel. are you? Yeah. Oh, Congrats, well, I throw no punches. Oh. Yeah, but okay. So I'm from the bear community, mm. and when oh. like a bear shrinks, <laughs> you get a little upset. You're like, oh, don't you look good? You're learning and so like, much today. I, I, I know about the bear community. Oh, do you? Don't even. Yeah. I know all about them bears. Okay. Hey. <laughs> if you know all about They're the bears, They're great tippers. Um, they, they tip well. Yeah, <laughs> they really do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do you know what a salmon is then? Because this is new to the bear community. No, but bears oh. eat salmon. And they're like hairless. Yes. And the bears are always trying to claw at it. Yes. So a salmon is like, did, did you know this? No, I didn't. Like and these young, two guys are like, what are you guys talking about? Like this is zoology. Yeah. I so so obviously knew this. Are you hungry for salmon? TMZ is going to clip that and be like, Josh has now turned to salmon. Yep. <laughs> I'm so it's a young, new bile boy. Young. Is what it is. Oh, is that? Yeah. I thought we were talking about food. I'm always hungry. I knew otter. Like otter and meerkat. Yeah, but otters have hair. But the salmon is like a hairless. Got yeah, it. got it. Yeah. High, high in omegas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. High in omegas. <laughs> I'm sure. you, I don't know if these guys know what bears are. No, you, you guys they are like, what is the bear? Like, yeah, we are not too explain it. Please, so please so give you like, I'll educate us. Fill us in. I'm going to give like the PG family friendly version. I don't version. know if I want you to educate me on this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do it anyway. <laughs> no, I need to so you don't go around saying, I want salmon tonight. Your phone will start picking up and be like, Hi, it's Neil Patrick Harris. Um, <laughs> what you doing tonight? <laughs> Eating salmon. So like a bear is like a bigger, fuller gay man that's hairy and sweaty and they're bearish. Okay, makes And then sense. an otter yeah. is like a younger, slimmer version. And a wolf is one with muscles but still hair. Okay. 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 Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Did gotcha. I educate everybody? <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it's no. actually this. Yeah, no, no, this is no, this no. new. This yeah. is yeah. now yeah. salmon yeah. makes sense. Yeah. To be yeah. fair, yeah, yeah, it really does. There you go. <laughs> um, also, movies that are in trouble. Bond twenty five. The director picked up and left, and now they might have to rewrite the whole film. Oh mm. wow! I'm upset about that one. That's I'm a, a huge Bond fan. With is Daniel Craig still Bond? So he wasn't going to be because uh-huh. Sam Mendes was involved, and Sam was like, "Fine, you take it. You're the star." So he left, and Daniel was like, "Okay, I'm gonna come back for one more." And they're like, "Okay, great." And then now the director's left, and they think it's because he was having problems with Daniel. Ooh. Allegedly, so oh, damn. The... Yeah, the director's not. Oh. Yeah. There so. was some rumors that Idris Elba might be, and he played with it for a little bit, yes. which is great PR, and by the way. Uh, but then he refuted right. it. Henry Cavill is is uh, supposedly in the lead for the new Bond, which oh. I am fine I with that. I would have been, okay. yeah. been big on Idris Elba being uh, the new Bond because that's actually a very actually interesting to actually watch to see his work on film. And it's like, okay, now we're all, all into a whole diversity. Everyone used to seeing Bond as white, but now we're seeing new, in, the new, in the new era, new look. So I was like, oh, I want, I want to see how it goes. A lot of people were really, fan really of that. for it. Yeah, I would love to see that. Are you kidding? Yeah. Some sexiness. <laughs> um, so very sexy. Very, so very Final sexy. film in trouble. The Little Women adaptation. P.S. How many Little Women adaptations do we need? Like, <laughs> what's going to happen at the end? Is she going to like live and then like they move to New York and become cabaret dancers? I mean, They're, nothing else is going to happen in this story. Do they become big women? Like ever? <laughs> <laughs> they become bears. <laughs> <laughs> Bear, bear women is the actual bear. next one. That's the, that's the next one. Bear women, that, yes. That I would watch. Bear that women. Would, I need bear star women. in it. I need Maybe you in it. What'd you say? <laughs> I need you in it. I need you in it. You know, the one non-bear oh, friend. Okay. The one non-bear friend. Who would be like a bear woman? Like Rosie O'Donnell, probably. Rosie O'Donnell? Yeah. She, is she hairy enough, though? Probably. Um, I, she, she, looks, she might she, have hairy She seems arms. a little granola so, and hairy. Right, like hairy Oh, you arms. know who would be good? I just saw Support the Girls. Uh, Leah Delaria. It, what? Oh, Leah Delaria Leah would be. Delar- great. She's yeah. queen of the bears. She's yes. so good. That's so she's so. Un- yeah, she's like a dominant. She's so like a good. dominant so top. Yeah. actually, yeah, she's yeah, scary. she really is. She's scary. <laughs> she is. She's awesome. I saw her in Rocky Horror on Broadway, actually. Yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was for, yeah. for the for she the was, for she the was great. reboot, that was uh, awesome. Uh, but Little Women lost Emma Stone, and then they quickly replaced her with Emma Watson. I was like, I guess they didn't want to like scrape the whole name off the door. They're like, let's stop at Emma. What Emmas do we have? Who made that switch? It doesn't even make sense to me. They're not even the same person in the world. In interesting choices. Uh, Wait, who are th- who? Who is she playing? Doesn't it matter? <laughs> I mean, they're all gonna cry at one point. They're all gonna be really cute and pretty at one point. Jo- Josh Joe, being right? being a. Uh, being an expert in Little Women. Expert. Who, who expert. I, love, I love Little Women. He knows how to get them and then women. lose them. <laughs> exactly. Pretty much. Good job, Josh. Take no. them Little Women. That, that sums it up well, right there. <laughs> Joe, Amy, Beth, Meg, and oh. Meg. So Joe's like the outspoken, you know, she's the she's I leading the tribe. It's so I, I'd say one. it's Joe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's who Just I like think. Just like in Facts of Life. I think you have to be named you, Joe jo- <laughs> to be like a lesbian. Like, yes. You know, leading the, leading, yes, absolutely. I don't think they've gone that far with his adaptation, though. I don't think 
like yeah. Joe is some big like <laughs> flaming lesbian now for little women. She's like, oh, I, I love the women. <laughs> Not yet, but just wait till we get that our hands be, on it. Well, you said how many adaptations could right, there be? Right, that would be perfect. A lesbian adaptation. Yeah. On it. Lifetime. This I one's this it. one's on life. I think a lot of the straight people in Hollywood uh, would actually watch that. And be like, "That's a gay film. I will watch." I am, I am gay like, and in Hollywood and would watch that. You know, I don't right. think that's a just straight. You know, movie. I think I'd watch ten minutes and get bored. They'd be like, "Meh." <laughs> Not if it's a lesbian adaptation. But I'm like, I love how the gays are all for gay movies, and it's like, "Oh, this new lesbian film." And we're like, "Eh, yeah. never mind." Sorry. Well, just get in a hot, hot shirtless man. Yeah, right? that's true. Actually. I made this comment. Oh, God, Gosh. these poor guys are like, what is this? Is the gayest conversation we've ever had? Right? No, we're, no. No, we're just having good. fun. No, but this is this radio show. Do you more shots? Do you want the Amsterdam? Yeah, do you need some more Amsterdam? I'm learning more about the bear now that you've mentioned it. I never had no knowledge about this whole bear community thing. I'm like, oh, the bear otters, wolves. I'm like, okay, how the learning is more? It's the first for us over here. There's also the sloth, which you don't want to date the sloth. Because that's a pot smoker. <laughs> okay. I'm not even kidding you guys. <laughs> Gay or straight. Or straight. Right. Yes. Okay. Sloth, okay. Really? Really? Sat, really. Never date a pot smoker. Mm-hmm. Not a sloth, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just a sexy pot Have you ever seen like a really active pot smoker? Like, let's go to the gym. <laughs> I, I, people use it for medical reasons or they say yeah. that. You know, oh, so. yes. It's like, I got a paper well, cut. This is a new topic for me to actually come to my gay <laughs> friends and talk about it. And they're like, how do you know? I'm You'll like, be a I've hit at it. parties. You'll be such, <laughs> it's true. You'll You're be so such right. a hit, and then, and then you might get hit on. But <laughs> uh, For our audio listeners, you can check out the video stream uh, of what we're doing here on Facebook, YouTube, of course, the Hillcrest Social app with all of our On The Rocks video. And, of course, all of the On The Rocks videos also on ontherocksradioshow.com. My mom, Mama Rose, is in the chat room on ubnradio.com oh, and Facebook. Ask her your question. She will answer it. If it's a burning question, we'll ask it on the air. Please keep her busy. She's next to the vodka, and I don't need her <laughs> drunk Amazon priming. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, look what I found for you. It's like, Mom, that is not a neck massager. Uh, hello to our engineer, Kurt. Kurt, how are you today? Uh, I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, good. <laughs> this, is Kurt. this is the excitement he brings. Like, yeah, hello. Hi, it's a pleasure hi, to be here. What's hey going on? Kurt, do you have a pun for us? He's I, so punny. I always have. I uh, have. <laughs> I always have puns. I know you do. Yeah. People love your puns, by the way. I'm like, did you know we had a whole like rest of the show? And they're like, oh, I like the puns. Well, I mean, that's the important part, right? Oh, so. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, I really love how the Earth rotates. You know that? Uh, in a roundabout way? Cl- no, it really <laughs> makes my day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, no. You can just give yourself <laughs> laughter or applause. No, no. More vodka, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the beauty that you can applause yourself. You know, I mean, you have the you have. He the gives me crickets. Right there, right? I'll do like the best. Do you mind? Do you mind? Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, sure. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I think that we need the uh, the little raspberry stuff, yes. too. Yes. Yeah. I have some there, and I have some there. There we go. Yeah. I have it. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, some you guys were like 10 minutes in. We're already on the drink. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> After all, all this true. salmon and bear talk, it's time to drink <laughs> some more over here. <laughs> <laughs> I had one episode. You know, we, we don't we don't peer pressure anybody to drink, because like I said, we love our sober listeners. But I had one episode where everybody was like extremely sober, and I was like... It was you do you're like thing. it's water. It's you do water. Your thing. Yeah. Just do you. Thank listen. you, Kurt, for that lovely pun. Uh, like us on Twitter and Instagram at On the Rocks on Air. Facebook On the Rocks Radio Show. You guys, you guys are not even really on Facebook that much. Mm-hmm. I, Jay I'm not and Josh, on I'm looking at all. At all. No. I'm trying at to all. tag you. I'm like Jay, yeah. Jay. I just joined social media. Mm. I actually That's so just crazy to me. Instagram. That is so crazy I, I to know, me. I know. I've been completely. I I don't. I don't. I don't know why. Oh, I envy you. I envy you so much but, for that. But yeah. everybody keeps telling me, oh, you shouldn't be on it. Well, and but for casting in Hollywood, uh, we have a success story right here from The Little Mermaid got cast from a Facebook post. Oh, oh Did wow. From yeah. really? you know, that explains right. why I'm not right. in The Little Mermaid. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's why you need to be on so, Facebook. That's <laughs> <laughs> time. Noted. <laughs> Noted. Um, There's always the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> the Little Mermaid Part 2 meets The Little Women. <laughs> little Women oh under I, I'm so available for Little Women and Bear Guardians women. of the Galaxy. Bear, Bear, Bear women. women. Yeah. I'm Bear so, Women in Space. I'm like so The title's going to get longer and longer and, and longer. As the show Les- goes on. Lesbian Bear Women in the Galaxy of the Guardians. Actually, I think I Part two. two. Part two. Right. Bond. So more like yeah. Guardian I'm Bears so of the Galaxy then. Yes. I'll watch. Yeah. I'll yeah. watch. Yeah. 
hysterical. Oh, God, we're just making Hollywood happen here at the show. Uh, like I said, <laughs> uh, find us at ontherocksradioshow.com. Send me an email. Book me for a wedding, funeral, quinceanera, bris. I don't care. I will show up. Info at ontherocksradioshow.com. Not a funeral. Oh, a funeral. Oh, I'm good at funerals. I put the fun back in funeral. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I said that to... Thank yes. you, yes. Thank you. That deserves that. I said that to somebody like, oh, I'm on my way to a funeral. I'm like, make sure you put the fun back in funeral. And he's like, it's for my mom. And I was like, oh. oh. Oops. oh. Some of my jokes yeah. fail so badly, yeah. you guys. Like, that should be a show <laughs> in itself. Yeah. Uh, anyway, listeners, you've been asking me about Glitter Bomb, and I've taken some time off of the show, playing replays. Yes, it is official. My new national TV talk show will premiere September 20th with the full season at LA TV. Check your local listings, because I will be in 13 million homes. I will be in your living room. So pay your cable bill. Make sure to tune in. Uh, let's take a little uh, peek at one of our promos. Meet my co-host from Glitter Bomb. Are you wearing that jacket right now? You put me in color. I was like, what are you doing? Check out Glitter Bomb. Coming soon on LA TV. Ride the wave. Yay. Yay. My co host, uh, senior editor of Entertainment Weekly, Patrick Gomez, and then telenovela and reality TV star, Enrique Sapene. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in. I'm sure I'll inundate you with news for that. On the Rocks is on the road. Come find me Saturday, September 1st. I will be hosting a Labor Day pool party at the Renaissance Hotel in Long Beach. I will be joined by my Glitter Bomb host. You can meet us in person. Come hang out with us. Go to gedmagazine.com. Also, I'm MC for Out at the Fair in New Mexico for New Mexico State Fair in Albuquerque, September oh. 9th. Uh, and I'm going to be on the City Pride float uh, the day before. So make your travel plans to come see me. I've never been to Albuquerque. Really? It's amazing. I'm a little scared. Do I need to wear boots and jeans? Is it that kind? Or is it like <laughs> Tex-Mex? Like, what's, do I wear like, I a poncho I don't know. or boots? I, or both? both? I've been both. to New Mexico. Let's do both. You don't sound that excited, Jane. you wear jeans <laughs> and boots? <laughs> <laughs> no, what did you, you know, wear? Um, it, it's affiliated with my college boyfriend. He's from New Mexico. Boyfriend so from college? Time, boyfriend from college. Mm, um, Spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> my salmon boyfriend from college. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that, that, but I, I only if like I, I, I link those two together. So it's very hard for me to separate it because that's where he's from, yeah. and I've only been there a couple of times visiting him and his family. So yeah, obviously, it didn't. Maybe you should well. come with me. Your family won't mind. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> we'll make new memories, Jay. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank and, you. <laughs> anyway, go to adultthefair.com for more info. I'm the MC from 7 to 10 p.m. on the 9th. Uh, new York Fashion Week, I'm coming for you. Uh, my Glitter Bomb host and I will be on hand for the fashion designers of Latin America Fashion Show lineup September 10th, 11th, and 12th. We're going to all the shows, and they put us in the front row. It's your first time in New York, yeah? Excuse me. No, no. I've been to New York like a million times. Oh, have you? I, I flew you in one week. night just to see Patty Lapone, and then I literally flew back after the show. So good. Oh, I. Oh, wait. I yeah. did know that. Right, right. I love okay. New York. Okay. okay. I don't okay. know if New York is a fan of me, but I love New York. <laughs> no, she's um, not. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> uh, but come join me, and if you want some uh, tickets, uh, hit me up. It's uh, uptownfashionweek.com for more info. Uh, we'll be there with cocktails and cameras. We're doing a little special there. Uh, final appearance. Well, probably not the final. I hope not. Uh, uh, Palm Springs Pride. I'm the official MC for Palm Springs Pride. Uh, I'll be on the main stage for the first weekend of November, all three days, for eight hours on stage. Uh, uh, so make your plans to come there. It's it's one of the best prides. It's the best way to end the season. So it's worth a trip no matter where you are in the nation. Let me introduce my bestie for tonight, Eric Restivo. Make just the return. night? I mean, just tonight? <laughs> 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 Test period, sweetie. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> Pass the vodka. Uh, uh, Eric makes his return to the On The Rocks family. In the past, you could catch us destroying local bars and businesses in West Hollywood. He is the host of his own podcast, Listen, Sweetie, right here on Universal Broadcasting Network and iHeartRadio. Uh, he's a pop culture, reality, television obsessed socialite yes. uh, who loves to shed light on some of the most hilarious and out of whack trending headlines all over the world. Oh. No one is safe. He also has an extensive performing. Can I record this? I like know, I, right? I need to make you <laughs> my intro good. of the show. I charge. You are good. You my voicemail. I'm like, yeah, yeah. fifty bucks. <laughs> this is uh, good. <laughs> voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> he also has an extensive performing arts and musical theater background, having played some of your favorite roles, including uh, the MC in Cabaret. Please welcome. Eric Restivo. Oh my God, Alexander. I, literally, my nipples are hard right now from that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Show. That was so nice. This is a family Straight show. We've guys. spoken about salmons <laughs> and otters and bears. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> like, really? Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Um, 
so Eric, what are some of your favorite headlines that you've reported on Listen Sweetie? Oh my god, I just basically I just think that there's so much like negativity going on in 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 our world right now that I try to bring light to like some not so deep things. So like anything animal related, like any time an animal is getting revenge on like a human for trying to kill it or something like that gives me extreme joy. What fun. Um or you know like um like there was this uh story that I was covering. I cover a lot of <laughs> local news in Florida. I don't know why. Um but that's because a lot of weird news comes and out of Florida. There was this this yeah. girl who um got so high that she called the the cops on herself and oh, and they, yeah and I followed that story and then just recently this couple ordered two um, storage container bins from amazon.com and in the bins when they received them were 63 pounds of medical marijuana Oh, wow. From Amazon.com, oh, wow. and then That's a bargain, and then <laughs> Amazon like, totally, and then Amazon didn't uh, respond to them for like two or three months, and the only thing two or that three they months? two or three months, Find and then keepers, and then for the fourth <laughs> exactly, month they gave right? them a hundred and fifty dollar gift card, um, and the what? people turned the weed into the cops. Wow. Yeah, was it Amazon Prime? I don't know if they primed it. Okay. The, the, that's when the little blue thing. It, it wasn't I love the that blue. That's a big question. Yeah, Could this it probably to me? was prime. To be fair, okay. um, I only prime, prime now. does it from yeah. different. It's not actually Amazon. Prime they, can be outside um, people who are just selling. Right. Yeah, selling selling things. Yes, so. I would have given half back and sold the other half. I <laughs> mean, I don't. I don't know what I would. I I would probably feel like someone would come to my house and catch me with it, and then I would that be guilt? guilty. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be able to. I, I, I'm sure I would. You know do something with it but I'd have I don't a party know. I don't know if I'd call the cops you know right away but uh, you know silly stories like that that's I all. love those things. yes thank you so and much you're so right though like today we're like paying such attention to like awful headlines and who's fighting with who we're looking at videos of people fist fighting each other because it's fun or right. watching you know other horrible it's just things. a crazy world to live in right now that's oh, you know yeah. that's that's really all it is there's no need to like get P like politically in here, um, it's just a crazy world, and to and to laugh is a good thing. So I just want to remind it, everyone to it laugh. It burns calories, and unlike yeah. the other people in this room, that's the only cardio. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I just say keep <laughs> laughing. You know, truly. Well, laughter is the best form of medicine. Absolutely, too. absolutely. Well, it really is. Um, although. Well, yeah, because it's scientific proof that it takes more. Uh, you intake more oxygen. More muscles to, to frown. frown. Yeah. So I looked that up the yeah. other day too. I think that's a myth. Yeah. Were you drunk? Do you? <laughs> I was. I still am. <laughs> that's why I'm still drinking right now. Can you imagine your Google history? I would love it's to crazy. just speak at it. Like, <laughs> Let me put what my is phone a bear? Away quick, what is so a salmon? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you don't know covering a lot. No, I would not Google that. <laughs> Um, also, I know that you yes. also you run. Oh, I got a Tinder message. Oh, oh. <laughs> come on, swipe to the I got right. Two. Did you? Oh, two. Two. Mr. Popular here. Oh. Oh. Your mom, Patty Restivo, says hello from New York. By the oh. way, did she Tinder Thanks, you? My mom. She, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It's probably my mom. It's I like, hope my mom still is hope for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, mom. You're so cute. Thank She's you. She's adorable. Thank you. Um, but you also run uh, karaoke nights. I do. Saddles yeah. Mondays and Wednesdays. Totally. I like kind of made karaoke a thing again. You know, like it. It's it's right uh, like um, um I want to say two miles away from where we are right now in the center of West Hollywood. It's like uh, Did Santa it Monica used to be and else? it used to be called Club Eleven. Okay. Yeah. It should have been Club, club. Two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> club Eleven, the same kind that's in Miami, like that kind of fun club. No, no, no. no. <laughs> if it was, if it was <laughs> that like, same too, club, if it was that same club, it would not have closed. Okay. <laughs> and exactly. become flaming saddles. Exactly. Yeah, no, not at all. Club but. Eleven dollars for a watered down beer. Right. Whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. I used, plastic cup. I used to work at a ton of West Hollywood like restaurants. And you bars did? Yeah. yeah. So when we first started. It so. was right. It's right on Larrabee and Santa Monica. So okay. Revolver Video. Bar. It's in the historic Girl, building. It used to be. I, you know, I, it's right there. I've okay. had many yeah. drunken nights at Revolver. It's literally, I, so it's the it's big building right, right yeah. next to it. Yeah. And yeah. Revolver's back, one. by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. We're going out. Yes, we're going out. We're going out. We're going we're out. Going, boys, no, you're coming too, there. but we're going out. You're coming too. <laughs> right, 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 Sorry, not? Randall. Keep it going. Yes, yeah. That's all good. What are the biggest mistakes people make when? singing at karaoke listen I, know I knew you were going to ask me this and it's here's my thing with karaoke it's it's so not that deep like I just want everyone to have a, a fun time like don't pick a six minute Adele song you know like there are other people in the bar take that into consideration when someone is having their five minute minutes that they've 
worked for to get up Two and, and a half you know minutes. like I think there should be a, a No, but cat. I I don't <laughs> like when people steal the mic. Like I don't think drunkenness is an excuse to be an asshole when someone is singing, you know, it's like let them have their 3 You're minutes about of me, whatever. Aren't you? No. <laughs> um and don't ask me to get something from YouTube. That's like a big no-no. Ooh. Like when they're like can you download something outside of your realm of stuff? I'm like this, no, it's not that deep. This is uh, my thought about uh, It's like no. This is my thought <laughs> about chill. LA karaoke though. I mean, most of them are professional singers. They all are. So not be, fair. And it's not fair. No. It's not fair. And I feel like you should have a good time. Like, you should yeah. have rehearsed this yeah. before you sang the song. Right. You should just have a good time. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree, agree with you. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I tend to play play movie yeah, clips and, and different fun videos in between. I video DJ in between people while they're singing and do trivia and try to kind of keep the, I'm, yeah. I'm there, I'm there so we, we try to keep the energy up. <laughs> there are some really good singers though that come too. Because of the fact that we have people from The Voice and people from the this and I don't give a shit. Like I just want everyone to have fun. Yeah. This person's buying me a drink, you're on The Voice and you're not buying me a drink and they're tipping me 20 bucks. So it's like at the end of the day, a human is a human and just let them sing. You guys have a good so, mix though because I've heard some really good singers and it's like wow, that was really good. And then I've heard some really bad singers that have that good energy. So it's but always yeah, right. a, it's welcome. Right. Everyone is welcome. So the bad singers all are about, intimidated by yeah. all the good singers. I think that's. I think so. Yes. I think that when you see people taking things so seriously, yeah. you know, yes. it may throw you off because you're like, oh my god, I'm not even I'm half terrible. as good as that. Like, I'd rather I used listen to, to someone wanna, having fun that's not that good and just yeah. be like, this is great. Well, I yeah. thought that I wanted to be a singer perfect, once like, in my life, and then I yeah. started working a karaoke yeah. night. Now I'm like, I could never. At the end, it's all it's all about just having fun anyway. Totally. Like that's. Totally, I mean, there should be no pass judgment passing on e mm. and on each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like I said, even if it's a bad singer, of course, like you said, you have a good energy. Mm. Everyone's feeling it. Everyone's having a good time. And plus, everyone's also drinking too. So yeah, yeah. Not, not about that good and bad. Time. It's just but there's, there's also singing. the ones that want to be social media stars, where they show up and then they have like their four cameras set up and they're like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, there's that too. Like, <clears throat> totally. <clears throat> just kind of ride with it. Yeah, <laughs> just go with it. All right. Let's Thank you. Thank you for that. You're so nice. At times. Let's officially introduce our guest. You guys, I'm so excited with our panel again we're always bringing you the best of so many different forms of entertainment and we have a potpourri of talent tonight Ooh. jay Park currently stars as marianne in netflix's comedy friends from college uh and i'm literally have seen every single episode and i binge watched it same. and i usually don't have time to watch and all of the episodes of a show same. Yeah. 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 yeah love it we're going we're going to get in it yeah <laughs> uh starring opposite mm. keegan michael key fred savage kobe smolders and billy eichner returning for its second season already in november so if you're looking for a binge show to watch that you need more of that's gonna be just a it needs to be away. 60 minutes each episode needs to be 60 minutes I think it can't be 30 I can't I, really I need more 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 art. but you always want them wanting more that's exactly yeah you're right, right. you're right but still right? give me 47 minutes like <laughs> get, and just get, give it to me you know what how about you watch 26 minutes and then I'll come over to your place and give you the rest done done oh, there we go <laughs> there we go done. Hey, I don't even know what that here. means I, I don't, I don't either but means. we're gonna find out together and that's that's all that matters yes that's all that matters bears salmon zoma yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're going to find any bears at his place, though. Podcast. <laughs> Um, uh, Jay's other credits include The Meddler opposite Susan Durandon and, and Rose Byrne. Uh, Rose Byrne. Rose Byrne. Rose, Rose, Rose Byrne, Rose. honey. That's a drag queen name <laughs> if I ever heard it. Oh, I love Rose, it. Me Rose too. Byrne. Uh, as well as The Mindy Project, ABC's Dr. Ken, How I Met Your Mother, NCIS Los Angeles, and many, many others. Having a knack for comedy, uh, she's eager to begin exploring more complex, multifaceted roles uh, to further condition her craft as an artist, which all started from playing a dinosaur in the second grade. She was so moved by that mm. performance she thought she was the dinosaur. Oh. Um, and aside from her work on screen, she's Method. a tremendous advocate for the uh, environment and incorporates green beauty into her daily routine by using all organic, natural products, except for the flavored water we have here tonight. <laughs> 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 you promised me this was organic. <laughs> I'm sure it is to somebody. Uh, it's just purified, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's also aligning with Best Buddies, a nonprofit. No, there's no aspartame. Oh, well. that, that's actually huge. Thank sorry, you. sorry, that sorry, sorry, huge. sorry, Alexander. No chemicals. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> uh, also aligning herself with Best Buddies, which is a nonprofit organization that gives uh, a voice and creates opportunities for individuals with intellectual and de de uh, 
developmental disabilities. Mm-hmm. This is my job. You think mm-hmm. I could have better? <laughs> um, as if she wasn't superhuman enough, she also plays the part of mom to daughter Ruby, who she uh, shares with her hubby, whom we all love, Mr. Randall Park from ABC's Fresh Off the Boat, uh, which is another great show that you could literally. You must watch have all, a funny house. <laughs> like your house must just be a funny house, or it's like to super quiet and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine? It's like, good morning. Good morning to you. I have a table read. So do I. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> but we're gonna promise not to be funny in the house. <laughs> Save it. Save it for TV. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I, I would. I would be scared Save of that too. For TV. Yeah. Yeah. But we're gonna talk. We're. we're we'll we're, talk more. Yeah. We'll we're gonna talk get more about them. my depressive, <laughs> terrible, abusive household. Totally. Oh, say another Ooh. TMZ clip. Totally. <laughs> also join us, uh, Mr. Josh Murray is a former professional baseball player. He quickly captured fame on The Bachelorette after winning the heart of Miss Andy Dorfman. Shortly after the season f- uh, finale, his volatile relationship <laughs> with Andy resulted in large amounts of media so attention. Um, and after the breakup, she wrote a book, a bestseller, and yeah. it was all about Bad things about Josh. Yeah. That should have been the title. Bad oh, things about Josh. I, I agree. At least like go all in with it. It was a bestseller. Bestseller. Still, he. Every book. I was gonna say every. I was gonna say like all the f- housewives. They're all bestseller. Yeah. Seller. Okay. Got it. Is it I, never, I never got my cut either. Was she everything in the book true that. though? That means you have to see hear from your I've side. I've only got excerpts. I've only got excerpts. I haven't actually read it like like he has. Oh, you need to. Oh, you. Oh, you read it. Oh, I have that dog eared. I'm like. It's the first thing I walk in. Oh, I read her book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he also made a, a surprise celebrity appearance on ABC's Bachelor in Paradise. Mm. Guess what? He found another lovely girl. Hey. Guess what? Didn't work out. No. <laughs> Man, I'm sweating even more now. <laughs> He quickly uh, became known as as the uh, bad boy, um, and social media still to this day just is all over you. Uh, but he, he returned to MTV's Champs vs. Stars, where he teamed up with NFL star Terrell Owens and U.S. Olympic medalist Sean Johnson uh, as they competed all the way to the season finale, where a crucial medical injury prevented yeah. him from winning 150000 for a charity of his choice. Um, but aside from TV, he also runs, uh, a, 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 he's an entrepreneur and a celebrity TV Guys, it's I'm so excited. listen. It's a very impressive bio. You're doing great. You're, you're doing great. Doing you're doing great. great. You're, you're doing great. Going. Oh, who me? You're doing great. <laughs> uh, he's co-owner and VP of marketing of an investment company that manages multiple uh, F45 training studio franchises throughout the U.S. Uh, currently expanding to the Bahamas, by the way. And there's plenty. And we have one right there. A picture of you Ooh. at one of your gyms. Yeah, I don't look like that. Look right at that sledgehammer right there. Not Is that the name of the gym? <laughs> F45. F45 F- training. Yep. Cool. Came from Australia. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. <laughs> and something he would know. I mean, you know. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, it's something that I'm very proud of uh, uh, of you, Josh, because I know what it takes. Uh, he launched his podcast show, Naked Chats, with Josh Murray, where he gets naked. Mm-hmm. But it's a metaphor for truth, honesty, rawness, and keeping it real. Yes. Uh, he and his interviewees dive into deep talk about many topics in an honest and unapologetic manner, which I love. A brain behind reality TV and love it. <laughs> uh, no subject is off limits. His podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, and his Instagram profile file which many many likes <laughs> <laughs> i'm oh. so bad with social media i gotta get better oh I please better. i never post you could do this and then it's like two million likes <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah and i'm like here's my check to you know charity for whatever nothing uh <laughs> rounding up our panel uh chris young rising star chris young appears in the latest hans christian anderson adaptation of the little mermaid released in amc theaters last week what started out oh, as a wow. casting on Facebook for someone so cool. uh, involved with martial arts expertise morphed into an incredible opportunity to work on a much darker version of the mermaid tale. Get it? Mermaid tale? Do you see that? Oh! 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 That was good! <laughs> Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> he had a very uh, international upbringing, born in Hong Kong, raised in both London and New York. His grandmother taught him Tai Chi when he was five years old, and it was the beginning of a very ambitious path uh, of training all over the world in the practices of Kung Fu and like eight other names that I cannot pronounce that I'm sure are very Do you impressive. want me to take over and pronounce it for you? Yes. yes. <laughs> Shotokan. Okay, so there's a okay, Kung Fu as in no, there's Northern Primances in Hongar, and then you have a Karate t- oh, that I did Shotoko, uh, Shotokan and Wadaru. I also did Taiji Ninjutsu. I'm turned on. <laughs> we, we, we all just came. And then we, we, to, all, we all came. Then what? I did what? some Muay Thai. I just crapped. <laughs> I'm so turned on. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sweating I'm, again. There's a lot. And then now, Chris, lastly, there's I'm also the little... panda bear. I'm not even kidding you. There's the panda bear. What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what and then the lastly, I'm still con- uh, continuing on training with uh, Kenjutsu at, at the moment. 
So I'm still accumulating more and more. Well, I'm so impressed by this because it was your answer of being bullied uh, both physically and emotionally growing up as a Chinese immigrant in the UK. And that was your answer to... I wouldn't say immigrant, immigrant, because I was already a British citizen when I was in that country. It was just because when you're, I was born in Hong Kong, it was still under the British ruling in 86. Mm. So technically, I already had automatically a British passport. And because my father is also a British citizen, so yeah, I wouldn't be an immigrant. I'm already a citizen automatically. Okay, but you were bullied. Yes, I was, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was... Um, I'm updating your bio as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was very tough. Like That's when I first started going like my first education in England as a child and I've never experienced it ever in my life because that was like starting the age from 9, 10 and so on until going up to 16 and it's just like it was been tough and I was a very very angry kid and easily provoked and somehow this form has actually helped me to actually you know control my anger actually notch it down a bit and that's why I'm like now it's like humble more chill and actually now I learned to just take some jokes, even if you throw an insult. I mean, I know how to direct it back and it, as a joke. As, now as I'm it scared. Is. <laughs> I'm like, no, but it's, it's, I see I'm, it like I'm you, still whatever negative, on. you turn into a positive. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I love it, especially we were just talking about how much negativity there is in the world right now. So yes. this is a good way. It's like focus your effort and focus on you as a person. Um, and also I was impressed you used some of that, that teaching uh, as – as a dancer, you studied at London's Westminster Kingsway College, majoring in dance, and then studied acting at the New York Film Academy yes. while working as a hip hop dancer and a street performer. Like, yeah, I, just I was. Uh, I was like, I used to be okay. So, because I used to dance as a kid first when I was six, but because like Michael Jackson was my idol for dancing, and I just kept doing it for fun, for fun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and then I just never thought I'd take it up as a career path first. And when I was studying dance as a major, of course, because I was a very like an urban street dancer. And then I start, had to start take, doing all the classical stuff like modern ballet, jazz, all that at school. But I still have to do all the hip hop stuff on the side. So when I was like still studying at New York Film Academy for acting, um, then I started like busking on the streets of New York just for fun, you know, like with the other uh, like street dancers just busking and trying to make a buck or two, et cetera. But I'm always there for the, you know, I'm very, very passionate for its art itself. So I'm always there for the fun of it because it's like it feels like you can express yourself physically and while you're actually, you know, bringing positivity with your audience, et cetera, and try to have them join in. So it's all about, you know, making a connection with people. That's nice. Love it. Well said. Well said, and you're well so said. young. And having a young person in Hollywood that's so like, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you started in, in, a, in a few features, a Spike TV show, Deadliest Warrior. Uh, you also appeared as a kabuki dancer in uh, 47 Ronin with Keanu Reeves. Um, and some YouTube stuff uh, with um, Sam Shuey, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, and now The Little Mermaid. Uh, you play a pivotal character, Ulysses, part beast, part man, um, who was tricked into joining the circus group. And it's your debut feature film role. And you're featured in the trailer, which we're going to take a look at in a minute. I can't even imagine to see yourself in a trailer for the first time, like, boom. Oh, I was excited when I first saw it, too. I was, like, I was waiting for the trailer to drop. I'm like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Yeah. And then I heard it from production. Finally release! I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm ready to go to watch this. This is like waiting through. And I'm like, oh! Hell yeah! <laughs> Especially when the trailer starts with Shirley MacLaine, you're like, okay, <laughs> it's real. Um, but I, and I got this question from uh, another actor who plays character actors a lot. You get your first feature role, and then they cover you in makeup. Oh, it's all prosthetics. It's like, like it's just a whole mixture of makeup, wig, hair, and all that. But then it's just a lot of the prosthetics. I think it was like I think I remember it was latex or um, silicone. It wasn't Same organic. Was no. <laughs> well, I was going to say, the good thing about that is that you don't think that you look fat. Right. Because every trailer that I see, everything that I, every movie that I, that I watch, TV show, whatever, I immediately, my first thought is, oh, I look fat. You are so out I of control fat. right now. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because you're really against body saying. shaming and like moms. I know, but. It's her own thing. I'm not against body shaming. shaming. I'm I'm for body shaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Just myself. I really this for my my, my own my own body shaming. But it's but that's the thing. Like immediately, I I see all the negatives. You know, so it'd be wonderful to be to be covered in prosthetics, <laughs> and I'd be like, oh. But then, <laughs> but then, but then there comes like where you're like, oh, then people are not going to recognize you as this breakout. Actually, he's like, yes, performer. it's a yes and no, because like. There are some people who's like, oh my God, that does not really look like you. But then it's like, oh no, it does really look like you because they 
they can see in your eyes. They already know who you Ooh. are. Well, yeah. they're you know they're transforming you. They're looking into past this character. Yeah, they're too. looking past all that makeup, and it was like, oh, we we see who really that really that care person really is, and they really see who I am already. It's funny because like, okay, this will be a funny story. I think you might get that too. Um, so I know everyone else they'll think I'm a beast man. I look like in. in in the film itself, but when it comes to Asians and to Chinese people, they say I look like Monkey King. It's a completely different story, <laughs> character there. It's Monkey King. I don't. I, don't, I, I never heard Monkey King. Is this another? Bear <laughs> thing? I'm willing to. Like, is this a new world? It's from, it's from a Chinese folk uh, like folklore. Trip from, Monkey? It's like, from a Chinese folk, old old Chinese folklore called Journey to the West. So it was actually based off a true story off a Buddhist uh, Buddhist um, journey. But then they actually managed to fantasize it, and it's been like in our culture for years. That's what the story stuff we grew up with. Now I want to. Now I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Chris, since you were, since you got this role off of Facebook, literally, they they were they were frantic to find a martial arts expert. Did they develop the character around you and your look? Um, when I first came across that casting, um, because the casting group said Asian American actors, etc., and they was like, we're looking for Asian male at a certain age range. Has to be a certain height. Has to be big and built like Bolo Young. <laughs> Who's Bolo Young? If you don't know who Bolo Young is, he's actually the big buff Asian guy from Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. Oh! oh. <laughs> the guy who was like, pick up one guy and he crushes yeah. that poor guy to yes. death and just holding wow. him. Wow. <laughs> oh, I wish so, I could find a cuddler like so that. So, <laughs> 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 so that's how I first came across the, the casting and I responded to it. And when they got back to me, I was like, oh, sweet. And it was like, oh, would you be able to come in person? I'm like, where would it be? And it says, it's in Miami. And I was like, okay, but I am in Los Angeles. Is it possible to me for me to do a self-tape? And I was like, okay, no problem. And there's like, I had to do a self-tape. I was the only, I guess I was the only person doing it in LA. And as thank God, thank God I actually was doing the own self-tape in the gym I trained at called Jam, called Joining All Movement where it's actually a lot of specialists for like martial artists, trickers, stunt people, et cetera. So there's like a part one of the studios as a backdrop and have my friends help me out. And then I threw in some extra footages of like how I can portray a beast man. Cause the first thing that came to my mind was beast man from X-Men. Mm. So I have gotcha. that physicality. And then, then I just start filming my acrobatics on, on the gym floor, like the home, like sprung foam mat and et cetera. Shirtless. Yes, I they, they, I, I and hope, they, I mean, I hope so. Now you said that, yes, yeah. they, they, they specifically said you have to do your self tape shirtless. Yes. Yeah. I was behind that. Yeah. I was behind you that. You should probably do the rest of this interview shirtless, think, to be fair. I, both, I mean, yeah, I think both, both of, of you guys. guys. Yeah. Uh, hello. I mean, what about JB? Come on. Me, no, no one wants to see that. But, but I, think, I think the men. <laughs> I'm obsessed I, with her. I think the men might need to see. I need to see that. I don't know about you guys, but I, I think I've seen plenty be, of pictures. I yeah, need pictures to see yeah. that. That's like, but you're a salmon crazy. and you're a wolf. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, oh, that's what's okay. happening. That's what, oh, great. All right, I'll keep that in mind now. I'm from, I'm salmon from now on. So Jay, I want to we gotta do another drink. Yeah. <laughs> Please. In talking about auditions, what I really liked about Friends from College, and I'm not gonna blow smoke up anybody's whatever. Usually, when somebody's on the show, I'm able to watch one episode or two episodes if I haven't already seen the show, just because of time and and all that. This is a show I literally was like next episode, and I watched, watched, watched. Yeah. What I was really taken at is that. And, you know, diversity in Hollywood, I'm almost sick and tired of talking about it, but we still have to talk about it, mm -hmm. unfortunately. What I loved was that this cast was officially so diverse without clicking and making everybody a hyper version of the diversity that mm -hmm. they were. It was a group of friends with such a great chemistry. Yeah. So many different, uh, you know, gay, uh, uh, African-American, Asian, but it wasn't like we have to fill these roles and that's what they're gonna play. You guys played friends from college and yeah. that's what was the most important. And the way you guys captured that chemistry in such a quick and believable way boggled my mind. Um, how did this audition come about? Oh my God, um, I just, I auditioned. That was it. I just went in and auditioned. Um, I remember when I went in, I I did my thing. I, I, I think everybody was coming in kind of doing Phoebe Gotcha. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, now yeah. That yeah. totally clicks. Yeah, because I she... thought about that for one second. I was like, well, I see sort of yeah. like how Marion is, I 
guess right. that like if we're gonna she's the do quirky it, one. If we're gonna yeah. if we're going yeah. to label it, sure. Yeah. But she's not. Well, because but that's yeah. how that she was. You because that's how she was. Well, in the breakdown, was like she's like bohemian, that, right, right, free spirit, right, yeah. you know, quirky. And so I think everybody was kind of coming in as that, and I was. I certainly was. And then the uh, casting director was like, "How about you do it as yourself? You know, make this like a real person." And that just completely freed me up. I did it, felt good about it. Didn't think about it as I do with auditions, you know? Mm -hmm. You can't really obsess about it. And I didn't hear anything for like months. So I just was like, oh, I didn't get it. It's fine, you know, another job I didn't get. <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing uh, shocking about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then um, and then I got like a call in the middle of dinner um, saying we're negotiating your contract, you know. Wow, that's Bam. crazy. We're wow. Getting this getting this together. Now, how long was the shoot? We shoot uh, about 2 to 2 and a half months in New York. And obviously I live here, right, so right. we I I go back and forth quite a bit. I'm obsessed with how fast pace. I told you this, how fast paced the show is. Mm -hmm. Like, I imagine, do you guys, uh, table reads, those are still a thing, right? Do you guys do table reads for, for the actors still do table reads, right? Like, not for this you kind know of what? show. Um, for the first season, we didn't. No. The first season, it was very, very fast. And then the second season, we did. It and, seemed like yeah. you guys really, really, really were on top of everything that was going on in the actual scene, in the actual this person's line and this person's line, mm. and making sure that your the timing was right on top. Like it almost flows so perfectly that it's like it's just funny without having to be It wasn't like a so sign fun. Felt it's just pattern. funny. Yeah. Very natural. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. also like a little dark funny too. Yeah. Like it's 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 it reminds me of like the comeback and then friends and then mm. you have the, it's yeah. like all of these different shows to kind of come into this, but this is way more superior and I think has more longevity than some of the other ones that we've just talked about. I, I just, I'm obsessed with it. Well, the crazy thing is when we first, uh, all of us got together, it was it was at like this costume call, we a photo shoot, um, we were all in New York. Isn't that funny? It's like, and... let's do a photo shoot, <clears throat> friends from college yeah. without, mm -hmm. hello, Having what's your name? Met. You guys are best friends. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing is, I'd known Kobe for uh, for a while. She, uh, her she's, husband, I love her. she's lovely. Her husband and my husband actually are really good friends. And so I had known her kind of socially throughout the years. I'd known Keegan and Fred, just kind of parties and yeah. raves that Fred, <laughs> you know, you know, you Fred, know Fred and Fred I, he gets down you know, and yeah. our glow sticks. Dropping that acid, <laughs> you know, our doing glow it. Watching me run some Wonder Years, <laughs> doing lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, like kind of throughout the years, I didn't I didn't know Nat and Annie at all, and we were kind of at this thing, and we were having so much fun, and just that chemistry was so immediate, and everybody kept asking us, "Oh, did you guys yeah. go out to dinner the yeah. night before? Are you guys friends?" And we were like, "No, we just met." But I think um, Kobe said this at an interview recently or last season, as far as Nick Stoller, the co-creator of the show, mm -hmm. having kind of a no asshole policy. Mm. You know, I love he's, that. He's at a point in his career where he can be like, I'm not going to hire any assholes. Yeah, so Katherine Heigl was out. You know, I mean, like, no matter. <laughs> she is holding on for dear life, by the way. She's like, Hallmark, do you have any more Christmas movies? <laughs> she apologized. Didn't she apologize? I think she for did recently. You know how many times I apologized? <laughs> she recently apologized. Yes, she did recently apologize. Uh, no, her PR no. team said, oh. hey, why don't you apologize? She's like, for what? <laughs> um, no, I think she did. I think she did actually release an actual. She's apology. Kind of, but she's PR learned. Team. Just she's you not know, gonna. You yeah, to, you grow up, and she's not the same yeah, person she was. Like, I think she got humbled, though. I think she got a little snub now, and she's like, "Oh, I have to." Listen, parent. everyone loves a comeback, so maybe she can come. You know, Winona Ryder did it. Maybe she can. But I like get, Winona Ryder. You know, I love Winona Ryder. But all Ryder. Winona Ryder do, uh, did was shoplift a few items. <laughs> That's and then also <laughs> now she's like the face of Marc Jacobs. Like it's so iconic. She shoplifted from them, <laughs> got arrested, and is now the face of them for all of their campaigns. When, when she signed the Amazing. contract, she's like, I don't need to read this. For good. <laughs> that, that is real goals right there. The fact that she is now. Ha hashtag goal. Hashtag Winona Ryder goals. Yes. It'd be like Betty Ford calling me, be like, hey, do you mind doing a few testimonials? That's, that's I idea. would love to. Uh, <laughs> Let's take a look at the trailer for uh, Friends from College. 
I just totally forgot she was the same. <laughs> Last week we were adults before we moved here, turned 19 again. It's a reunion! The friend group is back! I know you love your college friends, but every time you get together with them, you all become a bunch of little bitches. Is it okay that I hate him a little bit in this role? I, I, I sometimes hate him. Like, I just like, hate him a little bit. Like, I, 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 I just like, I want, I want him. I didn't, I wanted him to tell, I didn't want Lisa to feel good. I didn't, I felt horrible for Lisa. Like horrible. Yeah. I've been here 10 Hor minutes. Like, you've taken yeah. yeah, you like him more this God, season. I didn't, I didn't hate him the whole season, but at like the last ep... I love my life. Oh, I here? just wonder what oh, would happen if oh, it was blown to smithereens and I got to start all over again. Oh, so that has sorry. nothing to do with your affair? It's a stupid college hookup. It never ended. Why do you insist on calling it an affair? Because you guys are married to other people and having sex with each other. This <laughs> job. They're evil. You fucking cocksucker! <laughs> so you went to Harvard. That's weird. That's not Harvard. Yeah. 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 How do you sleep with women that are half your age? It's soul crushing. <laughs> Good people. This part is going to be all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that. We are such bad people. Such bad people. <laughs> oh, Do you want the, the, the musical? I don't know. Streetcar. I'm not from the type of person that has to have meaning in their life. <laughs> 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 everyone to know that after a long talk with Max last night, I have decided to go ahead and try to like you. <laughs> that is achievable! Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. What are you guys doing? Slow. <laughs> <laughs> slow. <laughs> slow. <laughs> slow. <laughs> slow. <laughs> Go yeah, so put this on your watch it list. It goes by watch. so fast, Seriously. though. It's when only you eight watch episodes. It, it goes by it's too yeah. fast. It's four hours, it's so, it's four hours of fast. your time. It's and th that wine tasting trip has been every one of my friend outings where it starts out fun and yeah. whatever, and then it just... It was so real. It was. Uh, it was. Right. It was By the scary. last one, yeah. 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 <laughs> the smoke <laughs> coming, the everything. It was so good. All right, talking about auditions for projects, Josh. Uh, obviously, my email was just flooded with Bachelorette, mm. Bachelor in Paradise, and I don't want to focus on that because we're talk about the podcast <laughs> sure. um, and your gyms. But how did you get the call for the Bachelorette, and what made you say, "Yeah, this seems like a good idea"? Yeah, I've always been a a big relationship person. I've always wanted to settle down and have a wife and kids. Right? Then do it. And now, I, and now I just turned 34 and I'm still single. So I'd always wanted to focus on that. And I was actually in Athens at the time when I came back to school and played football with my brother. And um, What's your brother's phone number? Yeah. <laughs> he just got engaged. He actually just got engaged. So? <laughs> so, <laughs> Just nice. like the show. Fresh from college. Today. We see doesn't matter. Yeah. And I was still over there kind of helping with my brother and sister in school until they were done. And um, they actually called me. The bachelorette called me and they said, you've been nominated by some people and some friends. And I said, okay, well, I guess let's talk about it a little bit. And I wasn't going to go on because my brother was actually getting drafted that year to the NFL. And I've always, I've stopped a lot of stuff in my, my life for my family. So I said, I, I just can't do it. And they, um, they told me, no, if you make it all the way, you'll still be home for his drafts and everything. And then fast forward, oh, I get sweet. engaged. That's and I, we need new friends, sweetie. Yeah. We need yeah. friends to get us wow. on the back. We're sexy brothers right? in the NFL. <laughs> but he got drafted and I had to FaceTime him. So they lied to me and I got on the show. So I would never have gotten on. If Wait, I reality wanted. TV lying to <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Can't believe that. But that's how, that's how it happened. And I always wanted to, I want to settle down. I've always wanted to settle down. But uh, so today, not? like right now, at this present moment, you would like to settle down. Like, if, oh, like are you dating right? Are you dating right now? Not talking, talking to a couple of people. Nothing okay. serious. But um, but yeah, one hundred percent. I would love to. But how hard is it to date now? I mean, obviously, Very tough. mainstream has seen yeah. you on two shows. They've seen two failed relationships. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it's you, true. But <laughs> go easy. It's true. No, 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 no. And no, I, don't, I don't mean that. that yeah. I mean, no, we, I love it. I'm an open book. It's the truth. It's the truth. Well, and you're in somebody else's book too. Yeah. No, no. But, exactly. But it's Hello. not. But it's not stuff you shy away from. And this is yeah. what I love about your podcast. You're very honest. We all have failed relationships. Yeah. It's just that oh, yours yeah. happen to be in front of millions and millions of happen people. On, yeah. Right. So, but how hard would it be for you to go on a date and for somebody to be like, "I'm gonna meet Josh, the bad boy from Bachelorette"? Mm -hmm. It's like no. When you were on Glitter Bomb, because you're in the first season of Glitter Bomb, yeah. hey. um, when I met you, I was like, wow, this is not the Josh that I saw yeah. in, in the shows. 
in a reality show, just like with other projects, you're mm-hmm. cast as as yeah. as your role. Did yeah. the producers tell you what role you were going to be playing? No, not at all. Because I didn't I didn't know that I wasn't about TV or anything. I honestly just wanted a relationship. So I went on just being naive and like, okay, I'm going to be myself and I'm going to try to find someone. And when they ask me questions to be manipulative or try to get me to do certain things, I have a very strong personality and I just do what I want to do. And if I feel it's like morally correct, and when you don't listen to some people, sometimes they decide to. Make it look a certain way. Wait, but wasn't he chosen uh, over Nick Vile? Yes. That was yes. So, they were our choice. Yeah. And then they shared uh, airtime on Bachelor Paradise. Oh, 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 look at all this. Uh, girl, right? Yeah. I know. Hey, I know girl. people who know the Bachelorette. I, yep. I love the Bachelorette. Yeah. I, the Bachelor. I love all of that. It's like a guilty but pleasure. But Nick Vile uh. was the bad boy. Well, Later, right? Kind Later, of. yeah. That's right. Yeah. You were the bad boy. Before I guess, but I've never been considered like I've never been considered a bad boy in my life. I just you don't seem that bad. People. You see, like you I'm, I'm pretty... naughty, but I'm like a bad person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I think you would ghost somebody. I really do. Ghost? I, I, have, I don't want to because I feel bad. That's, that's why I don't why, talk to other girls. I feel bad, bad about it. And that's you why ghost them. That's yeah, why or I don't. Yeah, that, that's why. Josh, tough. do you think that you did the podcast kind of come to you at a perfect time mm-hmm. with the, your ex's book being out? Did you kind of use the first episode of your podcast mm-hmm. to kind of like set the record straight a little bit? As far like, as that's concerned, yeah. kind of a little because everybody's been asking questions since the book's released, and I right. come from a family that were like, "All right, just take the high road. Don't worry about this stuff. People know the true you. You can't listen to all the which is very and respectful, haters. by the way. Totally. It's tough, also at the same time because yeah. you have to listen to lies and negativity. Yeah. and I like. I love a lot of things, but I hate liars. I hate selfish people. I hate fake people. And I feel like that's all I've dealt with since I've been on the show. And it's been very tough. It's tough because every time you try to defend yourself, people are like, oh, you're just making excuses. You're not like this. We saw you on there. I'm like, well, you When you just you moved really to L.A. Me. too, right? So yeah. welcome to the land of yeah, fake. Exactly. You know, truly. Well, I'm about to head back to Atlanta this next month. I'll be oh, back nice. out here again. But, Wait, um, you're going to move back to fun. Atlanta? Well, my dog's down there. I got to get some stuff done with the F45, the gyms and everything. But I'll come back down here. Road trip. Or Let's go. <laughs> I am. I'm actually going to drive over there when, I'm, when I leave here. So, but yeah. Well, I'm terrible at <coughs> compiling, but <I'll>, <laughs> <laughs> I will travel you. Um, but podcasting, mm-hmm. people don't realize how much work it actually is. Yeah. It's not just like, yeah. oh, let's set up a microphone and let's podcast. Yeah. I love uh, for your first four episodes uh, who you've chosen mm-hmm. on. In fact, you actually interview your ex, mm-hmm. which I think is very dangerous. Okay, so yes, I, I interviewed her and it was a great interview, but there were some stipulations involved afterwards, so now she, for some reason she won't let me put it out. Oh, and if wow. you guys knew the reasons, you'd be like, wow, that's crazy, but it is what it is. Mm. Yeah. Wow, so, that's so crazy. I just thought it was, no, you don't know. That's I did so it because crazy. I thought it was a mature, it's nice because not all breakup should be nasty and people need to see that people can come together after a lot of time and still be friends about things oh. mm-hmm. but yeah hmm. some people want more than friendship and i'm not into that anymore so oh so it's oh. just not going to be released boom boom <laughs> um what has your creative process with the podcast uh w- what has that been like did you work with a team did you come up with the no idea on your i own? just do it I, i'm doing it by myself i like to have a voice and i like to give others a voice as well because after seeing television, how certain people are portrayed sometimes, like it hurts me and I see how others are. And I'm like, people need to learn a different side of them, like the truth about them in real life, not just what they're shown on TV to be. So I like kind of diving deep and getting in depth. And I also had my friend Sean Johnson, Olympian in, and she, she battled with a lot of stuff at 16 when she was in the Olympics. Yep. Demario, who was accused, you know, of, of some major mm-hmm. things on ABC. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Robbie, I just, just did an interview that's releasing this week with Robbie Hayes. He actually dated Amanda after I did. And there was all this controversy about that, but yep. people don't realize it's not a big deal to me. Like we're still right. friends. It's actually took a burden off my back for a while. So, yeah. But I get digged out. Now, Jay, yeah, I'm, I'm very real. interested. Being part of the entertainment industry, what draws you to watching a show like like The Bachelor, uh, like The Bachelorette, Bachelor in Paradise? Why do we love these shows so much? You know, ultimately, I believe in love. I, I really do, and I I, I know it's weird, and mm. and and that's not and, weird. It's not weird to but, believe in love. But no. I don't think it happens to everybody, though. It does not happen to everybody. But I think, like, when you're in the industry, like, you know how much of it is kind of staged yep. or manipulated. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I, ultimately, I believe in love. Mm-hmm. And I want people to fall in love. And I want people to be happy and find the right person. Well, you're pr- a pretty good example. Please tell meeting Randall at an audition <laughs> and, like, your whole, like, Awkward first is that how you met? meeting. We did. That's awesome. That's awesome. That really yeah. is cool. That but is they were awesome. like two ships passing the wind, and then he invited you to his yeah. birthday party, and it yes. was kind of awkward. You, you have done. <laughs> yes. Get out of my head. Um, 
<laughs> just a, it's it's such a cute story, especially people in in the industry. Because I'm jaded, and I'm like, do not date mm. anybody in the entertainment oh, industry. Yes. But but this yes. is a great story. And you guys have done such great projects together. Uh, and you know, raising well, tomorrow is going to be our ninth year anniversary. Congrats! Congratulations! Oh, that's marriage. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Nine years. Yeah. And you guys were like fantastic. lesbians because you only dated like for a yeah. year and then got married like five really? months after, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> moved right in. <laughs> we are. That's not, that's not that we short a time lesbians. actually. I got engaged yeah. in two weeks. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> How well did that work out? Super lesbian oh. over there. <laughs> that's like a dominant super lesbian. You film award winning viral videos with your partner. Well, but tell the story because it's it's it's. So cute. <laughs> no, we uh, well, well, we uh, we had known each other for a very long time, kind of of each other, uh, just being in the Asian American community, and we had both done sketch comedy and and um, and a lot of projects in the Asian community, and so we had known of each other, and we saw each other at an audition, found that we were in we we had the same agent. And so, th but before that, I actually saw him at an event. Um, I was doing a, a play, and they were having a fundraiser for the play. Streetcar. <laughs> streetcar. Gen gender bending streetcar. I want to see this Annie. 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 I want to see Annie. I, Annie. Annie. I literally I know, I know. I do too. Yeah. And, um, and um, I saw him at that this happen. event. It happens. It happens. <laughs> I saw him at this event, and he had donated a painting. Because it was kind of like an art. A squirrel with no arms. Artist. A squirrel with no arms. <laughs> you get out of my head. I'm waiting for, I'm waiting <laughs> for the movie version. And, um, and so that was the last time I saw him. But I, I actually brought a date to that event. So oh, I, that girl. was before. Whoa. That was before. <laughs> and smart. We, we didn't We didn't work out. Um, Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. I hope not. It's like, wow. Well, <laughs> we have a guest house. Um, this is in Mexico. He, and he's right here. Um, so... We, you know, we had that experience, and then I saw him at an audition, and I kind of made the first move. I saw him, you know, sitting across from me at this audition, and I said, how much did you get for your painting with the armless squirrel? <laughs> and that was kind of my opening, you know, because I was like... Swag. Swagger. Total. I, because I had seen him around. Yeah. Okay, I knew of him, and I was single at the time. Like, before that, I had been in a relationship for, like, six years, and I found out he was also in a relationship for four years. So we were not available, but I was available at the time, and I turned out, and it turned out that he was available at that time as well. And I saw him, and I was like, he's cute. That so bitch, adorable. that's mine. Where, that's mine. Where the hell have I been? But then, obviously, immediately, I was like, is he gay? <laughs> you know, I don't get any gay vibe from Mr. Randall Park whatsoever. But is he married? I don't know. I don't know. So I kind of put it out there. We had a wonderful conversation. We Neither of us got that pilot. <laughs> you took him to West Hollywood for the night to test him out. That revolver. Yeah. We had a, just a wonderful karaoke night. Um, and, um, and didn't. You know, and but the thing is, like, I had a terrible audition because I think I should have been focusing on the audition <laughs> instead of him. See, that's the cutest mm -hmm. story, though. Yeah. Ever. Mm. And then I left. And he told me later, he was like, oh, I didn't think she was interested. Because you left without saying goodbye. She left. Yes. Because my meter had run out. <laughs> I was so over this auditioning thing. I'm like, I'm done. Like, every audition I go to, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then I saw him again, like, at another audition a couple weeks later. And I actually got that job. But... Hey. hey. <laughs> but it was but it was the same thing. We had a wonderful conversation and that's when he invited me to his birthday party. And um <laughs> and I went to his birthday party <laughs> and I was thinking, you know what? We know of each other. We have a lot of mutual friends. I'm going to go by myself with the six pack of Asahi and I'm just going to you know because I didn't want any, you know, competition. I don't want to be a girlfriend that he'd be interested in no. cuz at this point I was interested. That takes guts though going to a party by yes. yourself in the entertainment industry yes. takes the biggest yes. guts in the world yes and i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna just i'm gonna do it i'm yeah. gonna do it because i you know i'm i'm feeling good i'm <laughs> feeling fierce i'm gonna do it i went knock 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 open the door he is there with two of his friends <laughs> one being kobe's husband, husband. strangely so enough cool. Playing Atari. 
at his like, apartment with like party? a mattress on the floor. Oh God! And I thought, <laughs> huh? Maybe he's not my. <laughs> maybe he's not the man of my dreams. Um, you know, but I ended up staying like the whole day, and we hit it off. And at the end of that evening, he was like. Do you want to go out on a date with me? Because I think we had talked before at, about how people are like, do you want to hang out? I'm going to text you or like, let me find your Facebook, you know? Yeah. For me, it was very important. I was like, why don't people ask each other out on dates? Why don't people say I'm... That's gotten so weird. It'll happen on right. a text or social media, but face to face, mm. people are so afraid. Yes. And unless you do yeah. things like this, it's yeah. not going to happen. The yeah. worst thing you can get is a no. And I learned this from yeah. the first year of doing the podcast. Unless you ask, you're, you're never going to know. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, yeah it's. I, I get like thrown. Not that I have a million people <laughs> asking me out on a date, but I get thrown off when a man will like come up to me, especially at like a karaoke night or at the bar, saying, C- "Can I buy you a drink or can right. I take you out sometime?" It throws yeah. me off because so I'm not sexy. used to it. Yeah. Whether yeah. or not you're interested in them, always say thank you, accept the drink, yes. of course. <laughs> Josh, <laughs> would you do that? Would you go up to a girl and just say, "Hey, can I? I think you're beautiful. Can I buy you a drink?" I want or actually, to. no. Don't, I'm very can't. shy. I don't do it. Oh, I don't I want to. That for a minute, I'm, Josh Murray. I'm telling you, I'm just being honest. That's why. I went on TV it forced me to date because I wasn't dating before I didn't date it mm-hmm. until before college actually when mm-hmm. I was playing baseball but I'm shy maybe I'm afraid of rejection I don't know but I don't that go up to girls it. that I'm actually attracted to and ask them on dates I just don't do it you should start unless today. I have a bunch of tequila shots or something start today. Yeah. and then you're like, <laughs> hey, girl, like yeah, yeah, that is too sloppy they're I like think, get out of here I think I'm gonna give you a homework assignment <laughs> what you're gonna do Please. is you're gonna go and and ask a girl out on a date yep. that you're actually interested in okay. you know and so let it take as much how time I, as you how need. do I meet her is what I'm saying because I'm a home buddy that's the problem I'm, if I were you buddy. I would go to your it's local bad. you're so full of lies I swear at night I just got home from Brazil and then I was at the Olympics and then I was here and I can do a homework assignment if I have a coach telling me what to yeah, do. Yeah, the homework assignment is to uh, is to Seriously. ask oh, a girl honey, on a date <laughs> and video it, and okay. then send it back to us at On the Rock, okay. so we can so we can evaluate Justin, this. Justin, you got this. And okay. then we'll have Jay <laughs> give you commentary on every the straight guy well. needs a gay okay, wingman. Please. I'm not Strip. even kidding you. I need help. Room. I'm available. Seriously, Josh. I need help. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm We're doing this. <laughs> I also, I mean, I love love. Yeah. As you guys all know. Yeah. So, that's a, it's a beautiful thing. I, don't know if I'm, yeah, I mean, I don't nowadays know if I'm it's kind of hard to actually uh, define too. what love is because, like, you have other friends come up to you and say, like, "What do you? What is your definition of love?" And everyone, you know, has a different opinion about it. Are nowadays. you single as well? I am single. Lord, mm. we have. You seem very focused, though. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't know what kind of like girl you would. Would Tell fit us. into your life because I don't I don't know how you keep up your like physical routine and then on top of that yeah your it is for that, her I mean I, I mean I'm I'm cool with someone who's just very chill but at the same time if she's like if she's very active active and not too homebody then I'm be down for that oh she yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that would be like my uh, I, ideal girl, like someone who's like who loves to, I love it, who likes to enjoy dance or likes to train in the gym or like you know like to do outdoor activities, etc. Oh like God, be outdoors. active. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend needs to wake up like at 4 p.m. and that's like the perfect boyfriend. Like, so oh my god, maybe for that, I have like an eyelash up here and my lips are here. Chris, I want to talk a little bit about dancing and especially hip hop and uh, and your street dancing. And I want to talk diversity in that niche of of dancing because I know you've danced with a few groups. You've done some big Nike presentations. Oh yeah, that was in China that time because I used to be like a professional, like full time dancer. When I was in Shanghai most of the time, and there's like a lot of shows that they've uh, they made like a big thing, but there's like you know project after project after project, and I'm because I'm like not f- from China, China. So there's a lot of like I've background of many some artists that I don't even know, but they think they're considered big, and I have I'm just the only like foreign Chinese dancer who's just too a clueless of who but they are. But I think are. this mm. is so funny. You know, I'm on LA TV, which is a Latin uh, network, and, you know, they assume that I know certain Latin things, which which I just don't. So I find the story very fascinating. Is there a diversity issue in the world of dance? Um, No, no. There's never been a diversity issue. I mean, there's like dancers... It's like it's like it's like a form of dance is all based on physical human embodiment, etc. So even if you put the guy in a morph suit and you still dance the same way, you can never tell because it's still the same movement. Um, but like I said, we never had any problems about diversity. Um, so that's basically yeah, because like we don't hear any complaints, etc. The only 
complain is about like probably during auditions or casting because they like when you have casting directors they say we need a certain look and then okay this is the one thing that i really don't like this is why i learned from coming to america is like okay uh, oh have like okay imagine have a whole bunch of big group of guys and then you're like Okay, they're gonna make a take off a shirt off and then do the choreography. No, we're still waiting for yeah. the shirt to come off. Yeah. <laughs> and then next thing they do, I've got 13 minutes. And left. then they, they, next thing they do, okay, have all the whites here, all of all the uh, blacks here, have Latinos and all the Asians, or something to call us other. I'm like, really? Mm. They call us other? That's so mm. re- that's so crazy. Mm. But that's how it, that's how it goes. That's the casting process, yeah. and that's what we have to put up with it in order, you know, either we want to book the gig or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know. Hey, we gotta suck it up. <laughs> Let's take a look well, at the trailer for uh, A Little Mermaid, released in AMC theaters last week, and it's gonna be on uh, Netflix, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look. Once, long ago, in the deep blue below. Don't <laughs> be silly, grandmother. Everybody knows there's no such thing as mermaids. You wouldn't say that if you were in that far. Isn't that a mermaid? This just came in. I wanted to take priority. And we followed stories like this before. Wood witches, broken mummies. No, not like this. Hundreds of people have testified. Welcome to Mississippi. Oh! There's a powerful magic in you. A spirit of the ocean. Let me introduce you to your dreams. The Little Mermaid of the Mississippi! She was so beautiful, and I know she was real. I'm skeptical. You shouldn't be here. Mermaids. Do not exist. There's our boy. There he is. <laughs> Flying sidekick. Elizabeth, please. Aw. Oh. Right? Nice. I, have, I have those Very good nice. chills. Beautiful. Yeah, I just love so it. It's like the little mermaid, like, oh, another reboot, it's but really it's a great. totally different telling of it. And yeah. I'm so excited this is your first, uh, like, big film. Like, it, it, it's awesome. awesome. Oh, yeah, this is actually, like I said, this is actually, like, the biggest role I have ever worked on. So I'm actually very happy that because this actually has changed my life. Because um, at that point of time for the casting, I was like nearly ready to actually move back to London for good, like mm-hmm. leave, move out of LA. Because it was like you know how LA it is is draining. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> until that one, po- until all that, of us, one, yeah. 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 yeah, we all feel it. <laughs> until that one call back and that uh-huh. one call, mm-hmm. that one phone call made my made has made a difference for That's me. Awesome. So it kept me right. around. Thank you. Awesome. Here's what I want to say to my viewers. We have a large population of entertainment te- <clears throat> entertainment oh. people that listen. You have to work hard. We just had this conversation. There is yeah. nothing like an, uh, as such as an overnight uh, success. Even names that were like, oh, God, I didn't know about them yesterday, but oh, God, now they're an overnight. That does not happen. It takes years and years, and it takes sometimes being at the bottom of the bottom where you're just like, what am I going to do next? And it's going to take that one moment if you're working hard every day. It's not just going to be someone knocking on your door. You just, um, have, you have, to, just have to be in that hustle, like grinding on that yeah. hustle on and on. So Because for entertainers, it's hard that we can't, you know, we don't have a vacation. We have to pick in our own times. And the times we have to sacrifice our own time and commitment to 
to our own dreams to where we want to be. So it's just like I said, we sacrifice so much in our life to be where we want to be. You should make an audio book. I would listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> you really should. I don't know. I'll think of the title, um, but you should. Josh, uh, you have existed past the 15 minutes of reality TV fame. Have I? And I congratulate you for uh, that. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> how did you do that? And what is your advice for other reality TV stars? We have so many. You and I are huge Bravo Love fans. It. I could watch it all, mm -hmm. all day. But then it's like, oh, do you remember this person from two years ago? It's like, no, I really don't, even yeah. though we were, we were fascinated with them. We've both been in situations, and I know that people are listening, so I don't want to get anyone mad, but we've been in situations before where we've been prompted by producers of, rea you know, so yeah. uh, yeah, I, I mm. get that provoking yeah. thing. It, it definitely exists out there in the world time. of reality television. Yeah. So. But you've existed, I mean, you really went past that with, with your podcast, mm -hmm. with your involvement with these gyms, mm -hmm. and also, like, you've, you're still in the public eye. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be your advice for somebody in that reality TV bu bubble? Because once the next season starts, that bubble's gone. People usually forget about it. The crazy thing with me is I actually never went out to try to stay relevant. Um, you know, there were other TV shows that came to me to ask me because they know I'm actually looking for love. So I went on another show called Fantasy, Fantasy Single. Single first, yeah. Love it. And then Charity with Champs for Stars. So I've been fortunate that they want me, people have asked me to do stuff. And at that time in my life, as I'm single, like when I find somebody, I, I'll drop everything. It doesn't matter. I can be done with everything. But I'm just, I guess I've been lucky that people have continued to want me to do stuff with them. And just try to be as genuine as possible, I guess. I can tell you it has to do a lot with behind the scenes. You and I meet a lot of people behind the scenes totally. when they're not on totally. camera. Totally, totally. Like I said, I was taken when you mm. came uh, to Abby Glitter Lee, Bar. Abby Lee Miller. Like she, you don't, you didn't love her, but she was so sweet, like <laughs> so kind to me. The police behind loved the scenes. her. So so sweet. <laughs> She's like this horrible <laughs> attitude on TV, but yeah. she did her time. Be yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> that world can be crazy. But if there were like three things you were going to say to somebody mm -hmm. from reality TV that just got booked on a huge mm -hmm. show, yeah. what would you tell them to do? At the end of the day, just be yourself. I've always been myself. So even me being myself got me in trouble for certain things because I said no to a lot of opportunities and they didn't like that. But at the end of the day, I still like my conscience is clear. I've done all that I've always wanted to do. And um, just be you at the end of the day, you know, don't and do what you want to do. Um, I guess you can go with certain things that producers will say and kind of help out. But that's what I would say. I should have listened a little bit more to them and had a little bit more fun. But my focus sure. was so driven on finding that person and not politicking. And Aww. that's all I wanted. So it kind of sucks. That's what I want <laughs> to hear. Believe in love. I'm I know. He believes in love. Terrible. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's good. It's bad. Winning, winning is losing on Listen, that show. Look though, at so. your face. I can't. We need to hang out I, just so, so I can see what so happens. That's, that, I did want to. I, I, how do you win The Bachelor or mm. Bachelor? How, how, like, how do you win exactly? You, it has to be yeah. planned out. It can't be that she actually picks you. Yeah, no, she, no that's we picked it, each other, obviously, yeah, because right. I had to say yes as well, and I had to stay there the whole time. I was asked in the middle of that journey a couple times if I wanted to be the next Bachelor, and I said no because I felt like I would hurt her. No matter if I wasn't like, and I, and I was in love at the time, but I also forced it because I wanted to be in it so bad um, that in retrospect, I should have done things differently. But um, I don't know. It's an interesting experience. So. But Josh, how do you fall in love? Because I know you guys are mm -hmm. put like together. You guys have to live like in like a dormitory mm -hmm. type and you spend like 10 minutes with this person. Yeah. And so how do you build an idea of love mm -hmm. from that? It actually was. I enjoyed that process a little more, regardless of what they show on TV and everything, because mm -hmm. you spend time with that person. You actually get to have legitimate conversations without worrying about work or worrying about phone calls or all the excess stuff. You get to know that person. And if they're being honest with you and you're being honest with them, then it can work. But what I realize is when you're off the show, that's when you get to know the real person. You're just hoping that that's the same person that you met on the show. And a lot of times it's not. Would you do it again? No. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good one. Well, no, no, but I can't here's say the thing. That. I've always wondered because if you wouldn't have done that show, then yeah. you wouldn't have a voice for all your other projects now. Yeah. No, you're right. I don't think um <laughs> I don't think they'd probably want me to go back on the show. Oh, they would. Anyways. Oh, please, they you would. Know, the ratings would go right on. They uh, want to see uh, like, But half the people hate me. They just hate me for some reason and half the people like me. So it's I don't know if they'd but want me on any How can you be real and fall in love when there's mm -hmm. so many cameras? Yeah. The, the first day was the most nerve-wracking for me, getting out of the limo and getting used to all the cameras. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like I was saying, I, I'm just always real no matter what. So I'm trying to find a connection with, with the woman that's on there. And oh. everything else just disappears for me. So, so at the end, the time. you felt like you could be real without yeah, if I really, yeah, anything. Yeah, if I 100%, I was yeah. always real the whole time. Uh, here's yeah, another question. Always. Like, uh, they're doing the whole process of all their filming and mm -hmm. stuff. But bef before you got on board of the whole production, like, mm -hmm. were you like a very private person when it comes to dating? And yeah. then would you have like 
I had to learn to open up to accept all this. To, I had to, to open up, and I hadn't dated in years before I went on the show. That's why I said, you know what? I need to put myself out there and find someone why because didn't yeah. you I want life. For years before, he's so I'm, I'm shy. I'm and he's shy. A I have fun. He takes care of his I don't five not have cats. fun, but he makes I have homemade a lot of fun. soup. <laughs> he makes his own shoes out of wood. There was just I had I had priorities of life. I had I wanted to go back and play college football when I was done with baseball. I wanted to be there for my family, my brother and sister, and my parents. So I, I like my priorities were different. That's good. Oh, guys. Um, it's a good group. You got a good group in here yeah. tonight. Good vibe. So Jay, talking about keeping it real, um, I got a few questions from you from uh, from the interwebs oh. about the same two subjects. Okay. So one of them is your relationship uh, with your parents. Your parents still don't get your acting thing. In fact, you have like a design major, right? I do. Um, yeah. And they're like, "Oh, where can I find Netflix? Like, where's it at? Yes. Really? Is it on <laughs> Randall's <laughs> channel? Like, like, is that? Yeah. You know." My mom is super supportive, um, and this business is so difficult. Uh-huh. Tell me how that works, and is there some disappointments? Like, God, Friends from College is this huge hit. We're already going into season two. There's just that level of, you can share, but there's not really that understanding, but it's your parents. Yeah, you know, when I first got the show, it was very difficult for them to understand that you couldn't really watch it on ABC because that's all they watch <laughs> yeah. because yeah. Randall's show is on ABC. Yeah. <laughs> so they'd be like, oh, is it is it on ABC? And um, it was very difficult for them to understand that there are different ways to yeah. watch TV. Yeah. So my mom and my sister actually was able to stream the whole series when they came for a visit. So they did see the show. I don't think my dad's ever seen the show. Um, luckily, I don't have any sex scenes. In <laughs> yet. Yet. <laughs> yes. I didn't want to yet. see you with your yes. visiting yeah. boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. With, <laughs> with my rabbit. Um, <laughs> wow, that, show. That's a whole other. We got bears, we got salmon, we got rabbits. We got rabbits. We got rabbits. Um, yeah, got rabbits um, but uh, yeah, it was kind of difficult for them to understand. And it was the same thing with Randall. When we first started dating, um, he he was doing a ton of commercials and shows and everything, and they didn't really understand it because they'd never seen him. And they were like, "Sure, okay," and they saw him in a Korean. Com- like a Verizon commercial that he did got dubbed in Korean yeah. and was in the Asian networks. Oh my God, that's so funny. And they saw it and they were like, oh my God, he's huge. <laughs> like, we get it now. <laughs> and you're like, really? You know, because that's that's their life. That's their life. So, um, yeah, I mean, they obviously, they, they understand it, they support it, and they have a lot of church friends that, Tell them, oh, we. <laughs> think when your church friends tell you that, then well, you've made then it. Then you've <laughs> yes. made it. Yeah. That's that's kind of how, their gauge of how successful we are because they'd be like, oh, we saw them at the Emmys, you know, mm. and and so that's exciting. And you guys really <laughs> light up the red carpet. I do have to say, it's oh, thank it's you. a breath of fresh air. It's like. Ah, these are real people that are really doing it and really talented. The um, sex scenes, though, are really, really, really good <laughs> in this show. <laughs> like, Netflix has done a great job. Well, it's always really <laughs> like, fun. Yeah. Like, I always feel like, okay, if I have to do one, I know it's going to be really fun. Because yeah, all, they totally you know, know what to do with the kids. But this, this, this and ensemble fun. Where was Fred cast? Savage's sex scene? You know what? Yeah, no, Fred right, and right. I are the only one that have not ha- had a sex scene. And I was so, I was saying this to my husband. And he the can other fill day. those dockers, by the way. I and actually thought you, know you would with the what, I, I don't really want to give it away. That one one happened. Happened. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I thought that was going to happen. I want a sex scene with Fred. Like that that would be <laughs> like no but the, you know sometimes Listen, no that if, if a 12 year old girl is going to play you daddy know. warbucks anything can happen like, I, I, mean, like. <laughs> I want a sex scene with fred like, so just, do i yeah <laughs> uh, but Jay, i have to say and this is totally superficial you during that that wedding scene you look so beautiful when you walked Aww. in the room i was like oh, alexander wow. Wow. alexander they do an amazing i i, I have to say the Wardrobe the costumes was so on oh. point you know, after the first season, we were all the women were like, "We want our clothes. What do we have to do <laughs> yeah. to get our clothes?" Yeah. And they said, um, "Well, it's part of the world. It's part of your closet. So unless the show ends, we can't give you any clothes." So we're like, "Okay, we want the show to end because we <laughs> want good. the clothes. They yeah. the, it's the so characters. beautiful. Yeah, they're all really it's so beautiful clothes. Yeah. Oh, I think the guys got shafted. They're like, oh, you look good in a button up.' No, no. 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 you no. know no. what? The boys look good. You think yeah. that? Yeah. But You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nat, I know wears like 
T-shirts that are two hundred dollars. Oh, I'm sure. We're not. Yeah. yeah, we're not even. Yeah, it's beautiful. Everything is beautiful. All right, another real question. Working with your partner, and I got this in a variety of different ways, and it's from me as well. Like when you work with somebody filming something, you know, you have long hours, many takes, and you have you have family at home, young daughter. There's this like angst and there's like all this and then you have to go home and live with this person. Be like, oh, who didn't take out the trash? Who didn't pay the cable bill? Like all of that. How do you work that? And what advice do you have for couples that are working together? Mm -hmm. um, you know, we hardly talk about the business outside of like our work. I mean, when we go home, it, it we don't talk about really anything. Uh, back in the day, you know, we used to run auditions together, we talk about it, but now it's just not a big part of our home life. And um, and I think that's wonderful. Like, the beautiful thing about being in a relationship with, uh, with somebody in the business is that we understand it. Like, we understand, right. oh, that person has to work. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, oh, he's gone all day, or he has to go to, you know, Vancouver to shoot. Like, we get it. So it's, it's so that takes that out of the equation equation the angst you know? is right kind of, or that kind of then you have like but then you insecurity. see from like the celebrity couples it doesn't work because no, sweetie, then maybe they start you cheating. do maybe right. you do oh yes i have the same problem that brad pitt and angelina have yes. maybe you do when sweetie. i was filming mr and mrs smith i was flirting all over the place i know i mean i think there's so a lot of that. positives and negatives Thanks. to everything okay. <laughs> but okay. um so but okay I, how, yeah. how about this how about when you guys do kind of getting on each other's nerves what like, what do you say or what do you guys do to, like, alleviate that? We drink. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yep, cheers to that. Cheers. 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 We're cheers. all still cheers. drinking. Cheers. We're all still drinking. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this is how we end the show. We do rapid fire. It's nothing deep and serious. Oh. Um, and then uh, when we do this rapid fire, then you're going to tell our viewers where they can find you, all your outlets, which, Jay, will be really easy <laughs> for you. <laughs> when I was trying to tag you, I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like... Yeah. It's like, did you mean your ex, Jay Park? No, I didn't mean that <laughs> at all. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Go ahead. Chris. Oh. Start with Chris. Chris, it's not deep and, and serious. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's the second time you've said both those words in the same deep sentence. Serious. Just, yes, I'm not like, I'm, my head is somewhere about bears. Yeah. Yeah. We've been talking about bears all night. Um, Chris, your worst audition. Oh, wow. Um, I'll have to think, really think through this one. Uh, it's rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I know. Sorry. You did because this to when me you before. say it, I can never think of it. <laughs> okay, I might have to say this one would be my worst one, where it was for a commercial, sports commercial. I, oh yeah, it was for ESPN too. So my agency has sent me out to an audition where they want a judo practitioner, and I don't. I only know basics of judo, but I'm not an expert or in ju any judo, etc. Um, so and then in the lineup. There was actually legit judo p competitors, and oh. they already have this one dude who came in with like twenty medals on his <laughs> around his neck. I am not kidding. I would not. He cast literally him had that like annoyed me. He really <laughs> like twenty ish like gold medals around his neck, like he just came out of WWE Raw. <laughs> <laughs> And then I was like, okay, so all these judo practitioners were lined up. We got paired up, and I get paired up with the guy with all the medals around his neck. Oh no! And I'm like, oh. Oh, here we go. Oh. And what's even worse is that because the flooring itself was concrete, and they got the foam oh. mat, which is like this super thin. And thank God I know how to break fall, and just like because I've done stunts and knowing how to like safely do falls. But you do the best. Uh, best death drop in the world, by the way. You probably so, don't know yes. what that is, but <laughs> so as we're as it's a good thing that we are we're able to control ourselves when we're throwing ourselves in the ground. But it's just the, the it's just not comfortable, like being thrown down by a, a, a competitive champion. I feel like mm -hmm. okay, I feel like a complete. I'd have to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, okay. But I was not. Did he buy dinner? I, <laughs> I was just not. I was just not comfortable with it because it just feels like. My agency has just thrown me into an audition, which they know I told them I don't do judo, but they just did anyway. Yeah, but here's the thing. The casting director is not going to know the difference between that. That is not true if well, they, they are asking a for a specific. On concrete, they obviously don't know what this sport really <laughs> entails. It also is a good thing that like a lot of us, we're like all the judo practitioners, were fully aware of it. We're like, oh, okay. So we, at least we knew which throws to actually like, throw each other on the ground. So nothing like too crazy. Mm. So anything like this, like, we're still holding on to each other and controlling ourselves safely on the ground and not getting hurt out the audition. 
So that's just like I feel like that could be my worst one. Because I'm I played for it now. Did you get it? No, I did not. Uh, <laughs> it's the you, worst one. You guys, this was it. rapid fire, by the way. I totally was like, oh, <laughs> wow, that it? happened to you. Okay, okay, rapid fire. Strangest oh. thing I'm about the American. Really? Yeah. Oh, Jay, do you mind if we mind? Sorry, you sorry, you mind? sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, Chris, my are we on air? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, 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 Strangest <laughs> thing about the American culture that baffled you when you moved here? Mm. Well, because I was bra- I was raised with the British culture, so um, but at, being in New York at the same time, so it was a lot of back and forth. But the longer I stay in, in America, then I start li- realizing that I have to start taking this uh, the more of I don't care culture here. Mm. It's like everyone's like I don't give a uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what would your super uh, hero power be? Uh, regenerative powers. Oh. Okay. So I don't have to keep like because I do some stunt jobs too. So I don't, you know, some, there's a risk of like where I get hurt enough, and I don't want I don't want to end up going to the hospital, etc. So hey, save myself from healthcare and all that. Oh. <laughs> well, better healthcare overseas. <laughs> uh, yeah. Two better. people you would want to be uh, stuck on a deserted island with. Uh, probably be with one of my closest friends. Um, his name's Free Boogie, but is also was also my what's his dance name? Mentor. His, na- his dance name is Free Boogie. Is he like a DJ? Like, what, what, like I would be on a dessert island with a DJ. He's one of the OG. He's one of the OG dancers in the LA dance community. Like, he works like a lot from behind the scenes. So he's like done a lot of work Very with cool. uh, Tyrese, Snoop Dogg, Amari, yeah. and all that. But like, he helped. Like, he was actually a good mentor, very life changing for me to see change my characteristics. Not only as a dancer, but also as a person, him uh, as I am right now. Like, more being more humble and being able to listen to people better. So. He'd probably be bored on that island, by the way. Though. Like, <laughs> no, we're because we've been we've been friends for like over ten years already, so we're good. And then uh, say, I guess the second person, uh, that's actually a harder question now. Could be living or d- or dead. Oh, living or dead. Wow, oh. switching it up. Mm. Layers. The show is all about complex layers. <laughs> I love how everyone laughs. Yeah, I, was like, I wouldn't. Even, we just need the uh, one. I don't even know how to how, if it's living or dead. I don't know who else I could be stuck in a desert island with. Uh, I would pick dogs over humans. I was just gonna yeah, say a dog. Like, dog. Well, and everyone gets annoying after a certain time, <laughs> yeah, right? But dogs that are always great. Totally yeah. true. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll yeah. keep you to that one. One dance move or dance genre that challenges you the most that you get kind of scared of. Ballet. Oh, Ooh. love that it's, answer. I started super late at eighteen, and it, I was it was such a struggle. Just imagine like. <laughs> the Hulk trying to do ballet. Yeah, no, He's just on up. struggling, yeah. trying Eric to lift. Eric wants to see you in tights. So I'm like, yes. Yeah. So yes. does Jack. That was like the most <laughs> challenging for me. All right, Chris, where can our listeners, <laughs> viewers uh, find you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook. So in. you can find my Instagram on Chris Q. Young, as in C-H-R-S-Q-Y-O-N-G. Um, I'm also on Facebook, too. So you can say Chris uh, Chien Young, even though it's Q-U-A-N. Everyone says Quan, but we, in Chinese, we actually pronounce it as Chien. So, and I have my Twitter as in Chris Q. Young. Well, I'm really excited to see what happens to you. I'm uh, so excited to see Little Mermaid, and congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank what you. a great Congrats. debut. Funny, I haven't even seen the movie yet. Mm. Oh. oh. Girl, I would see a rough when cut, and then I'd see a rough cut. No, it, it came, came out the 17th, it, yeah? It, yeah, it came out on the 17th. It oh. came out on the 17th, but the thing is, you like, I was already yet. on set working on another uh, film. So, and then I wasn't sure, Lazarus, like... Lazarus, right? Oh no no no! Not that one. Oh, this oh. is a completely oh, brand. So this is a, this yeah. is a completely yeah. brand. Tony <laughs> this is, and blast. This is a this is a completely brand new one. This is actually my recent work I've done. So like, um, it's, I can say it's well hashtag Project Nine Cut. We can't say the real name yet. Um, so I played the lead, but for I don't that think I day, comment on this one. Yeah, so that <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Three, <laughs> I think. Maybe. So because that day I was rehearsing, <laughs> so I can't leave the Project set, and I missed Nine the cut. private screening. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, I'll, 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 I know I'll see eventually. Viewing party. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Chris, so much for sharing your story. And I'm uh, sure you're going to be an inspiration for so many Absolutely. people. Uh, Thank you. Coming here and, and, and working their dream. Thank you. Who's next? Mm. Any, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a spider by the tail. There going we go. down the line? Sure. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's do that. I don't know. Mm. Josh. Yes. Worst pickup line you've ever used, and we know you're horrible in. Remember, bars. I don't. Yeah, I don't pick anybody right, up because right. I don't say anything. Right. <laughs> okay, so, what's the dumbest thing you said to a girl that after you said it, you were like, "I said what?" Oh, um, I guess it's pouring the fuck. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember because re- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> remember when I pick girls up, I'm usually I got to be drunk at the time, so I don't remember anything. I don't remember what I'd say. I need coached on. I I need to, get to be coached. Drunk? No, no. Okay. I, yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's like, 
As she drinks. We're well, like <laughs> having a party a later. <laughs> no, like I said, I need to be coached. I don't even know, to be okay, honest so with you. Okay, so what's the stupidest anybody. thing you've said to a girl, like, in general? And you were like, I... Hmm. I do. Yes. Thank you. This is my he coach right here. Will you marry me? <laughs> this is my co- no, no. Will, will you marry me? That's what I said. Will you marry me? A couple there times. You go. Perfect. Did we get that? Thanks, Josh, coach. I, I am no, so you, into you. I just that was just I had to go. I had to. No, go it's perfect. It. That's what I'm saying. I need help when I get stuck here. You know. He's also said that to the valet here at Sunset Hour, by the way. Josh, this is actually from. I got this email a few different ways. Celebrity. Um, oh. That you'd be okay kissing a male celebrity that you'd be okay kissing with in an A-list superhero film. <laughs> A-list superhero, a male celebrity. Yep. Man. Just a kiss. We just, know you kiss a lot of people. Just a kiss. I've never kissed a man before. And a superhero for my movie. To be a fair, superhero which movie. Is cool, I guess. Um. Hmm. Any suggestions? And I'll say. I know. One why or don't not? you give Chris him- Evans, Tom Hardy, Ryan Christian Bale. Oh. We'll go with that. Ryan Gosling. There you go. Oh, my God. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds. He'll be down for that. Ryan yeah, Reynolds. Yeah, but he's got that weird cross eye. I don't know. <laughs> Josh, a binge food you'd be horrified for us to know that you ate a lot of. Oh, jelly beans all the time. Oh, oh jelly beans. Crushed so jelly good, beans. Though, yeah. I but crush that's okay. them. Aren't they jelly lower than like, Everybody, every time I tell people that I love them, no, like uh, Starburst jelly beans. Oh, no. oh wow. Oh, that is embarrassing. Any, yeah, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I do it while I'm at home by myself, though, so nobody sees. I just oh. talk about I'll it. I'll come now. over and watch. Do you do it shirtless? <laughs> Usually, yeah. Okay. Jay's <laughs> all about shirts. She's like, Kurt, how you feeling? I you do it during, like, during my naked podcast. How many more minutes podcast. do we have? <laughs> shirt. Naked podcast. Yeah. Shots for this. Right. More, more shots. We're going to get them. <laughs> Josh, if you could be on any other reality show, which mm. one would it be? Um... That's somewhere not- where I'd find my wife, right? Um, that, the that Real be Housewives nice. of Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you them. would have. Wa- I feel like the challenge was a good. Th- that's I love. A, yeah, that. That I you, really appreciate that. You get that. to show your physical strength and do all these and that's cool like things. More and my, it's yeah, for it's a more charity, you know. It, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, totally. That, that was the most fun I've ever had. What about Survivor? Awesome. Maybe. Yeah. Survivor would be cool. I've talked to Willis McGay who when I was on the show. We talked about. Um, What's uh, Amazing Race? Amazing Race. I think oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Very Josh, yeah. how funny yeah. would we be together yeah. on the Amazing Race? Because yeah. you'd be like, oh, no. wake <laughs> up. <laughs> Should we be sleeping? <laughs> like, I think Let's there's go, a gay Alex. bar. My GPS said there's a gay bar right around the corner. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, yeah, you're like in the Uber behind him. <laughs> <laughs> While wow, he's running. <laughs> Let's go. I have to throw him over my shoulder. The Amazing Uber. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Josh and Alexander Uber across America. <laughs> or Cambodia would be even be better. Let's go. Let's go. As long as we win. As long as we win. Uh, we wouldn't. Um, your worst date ever. Worst date Ooh. ever? Uh, dun, remember, dun, again, dun. I don't go on dates. Um, but... Well, it sounds like then any so date would have been the worst. It was date. a date on the first the first season when I was on the Bachelorette. They actually, it was a group date. Yeah, a group date I didn't like because it was oh, a, li- it was a lie were. detector test, actually. And I finally, oh, after I like a month one. of trying to convince her, like, I'm not this regular athlete, you can trust me. This, the next day, she sends me on a lie detector date. And I'm like, what the hell? And obviously, I didn't know it was like all TV, so it's scripted with that. I thought right. it was like, what are you doing? We just had a long conversation. So that date sucked. Yeah, that was brutal. For me, Wait, when did I think. Did you lie? Oh, did you lie? I did lie about being in love with her, yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> totally just kidding. I don't think I lied. <laughs> oh. They didn't give us a result. It was chapter she four the paper of her book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, that's why she's so mad at me. Yes, her audio book is like, it's called. Girl. It's Isn't it called like, It's Not Okay? Isn't yeah. that the name? Like, it was literally, a playoff that's of the like, name Juan of Pablo always said, It's Okay on the season before. So she's oh, like, it's not okay. Okay. And then, yeah. How creative not, and imaginative. So creative. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <sighs> Team Josh. Hey, oh. Josh, <laughs> tell our life. viewers and listeners where they can find you and also... Yeah. We have to listen. You have episodes one through four up, yeah, right? Yeah, what one through four? The other you ones guys being can released tomorrow. To it. It's actually a really, really nice it. listen, Thank and you. I love Thank hearing you. your opinion. So tell, tell people where they can find it. Yeah, my Instagram account is Josh Murray Eleven, and then Naked Chats with Josh Murray um, for the podcast. And I'll try to post more. I'm not good with social media. <laughs> All right. Is there a Twitter Better too? Than me. <laughs> there is a Twitter. The Twitter is Josh <laughs> Allen Murray A L L A N. Yes. I'm going to get better at social media, I promise. Please do. I say do. that every time. You don't have enough followers, almost a million, but I know. it's okay. No, remember, I lose 100,000 per breakup, so I'm, I'm getting down now. Then don't break up with me. You won't lose anything. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to find that one one, and then you, you can keep all your viewers intact. That's just it. I would that love one. to find one. No, no more breakups, but no more. You don't uh, lose your followers that's anymore. That's your new Instagram. You guys are coaching me. You guys are no coaching more me. Right? No more. There you go. Yeah. No more. Hashtag. No more. I think no more we breakups. should all be a part of, no and we should breakups. go on every date with him to see what he does wrong, and Please. then coach him and be like, in his microphone, like, 
You're doing this. It's wrong. not the dating. We're eating like two minutes in the back. Going on we're the just dates. like drinking in the back. Telling him what yeah, we're from another dates. table, like observing him, and we're like, Wait, okay, that would be you're screwing really up. Yeah. And then we have to slip in a small note yeah. and drink. Slip and a small is, note. I have a great time on dates. I, I have a great time like, on dates. Just fireball is not a good one. Wait, Alexander, really? We should do this. We should bring. We should actually do that. And we should do an on the rocks special, like where we bring Josh to a date. And we are all telling him what yep. to say in the ear and also oh drinking God. while we do it. I'm in. Can we I'm do in. this? Can we yes. make this happen? Can you Let's set me up with somebody that I actually you think I'd like? Yeah, Let's what we should do yeah, is, Josh, what we should do is we should get like two to three uh, yeah. women that you may fancy yeah. and see who would be around and availability. Are there, there actually good women? girls that want to go <laughs> yeah. out with somebody out here? Yeah. Josh, yes. so I, I <laughs> see. What do you fancy? Josh. I want to know what you like. Yeah, what's your type? I want to know who still says fancy, by the way. I, I like like an athletic woman, someone who's very athletic. active. I like a uh, very family-oriented person. Okay. Martina Natchelova. Martina Natchelova. So athletic, does that mean like, like not necessarily just like... being active in general. Okay, active. Not so lazy. Like, not so just about that means like media. I'll translate it. That no, means I, I, small actually that is, it's a big turnoff for me. I don't like when but people are just fit. into that. I like fit. I like a family lifestyle. I yeah. could like walk what away from everything What if she's a fan a of the show? If Can she's you... not like a groupie kind of fan, you know? No. Uh -oh. Oh. I would no. say no. Yeah. I, I would put that. We'll do red flags on. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I, we have to red. We have I to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love setting you people guys, up. You guys, I'm kind of excited. We're doing this. We're doing it. I love it. Josh, Please I, have, I have many I beautiful wait. girls that come through yeah. here that say the same thing. Like, mm. they can't meet guys. Oh, yeah. Done, done, done. Please. Okay. It's Thank time. you. It, you guys will it's all be in my wedding. It's happening. You guys, happening. You guys are all going to be in the wedding. It's happening. And we're going to my goddamn wedding. Yes. Can I say it? I'm the best efficient. Sorry, Kurt is like sweating. He's like, my wife just put a Stouffer's into the oven. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a Stouffer. No, Jay. No. Jay, They're like they're saying, whenever you say like, oh, you're the matchmaker, you should be your next 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 uh, Netflix special, like being the matchmaker. I can't, your own series. You know, I I'm terrible because my, my husband's always like, you're embarrassing. But oh. I love <laughs> matching people up. Like once again, I love love, yes. and that's why I love the Bachelor. I the love bachelor. matching them up and then telling them the secrets later. She's a Janie <laughs> in a bottle. I can't yeah, wait. Sir. Oh. Oh. So, oh. so Jay, like you could All just right, be your lead character as <laughs> the matchmaker wait. of your Netflix series, and then you cast Josh while you're helping him out. Please, please. Yeah, yeah we have plans. Sorry, Chris. It was us. all right. Dan, we have plans. My name's <laughs> on the banner. So thanks for excluding. Oh, it sounds like every production meeting I've ever been into. We Netflix, love we're the giving idea, you content. But we're gonna get a new we're gonna get Mario Lopez. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Extra. <laughs> yep. I would have been really funny as the new Ross Matthews. Anyway, Jay Sin Park. Oh, I love oh so do I. Oh, I'm on my Hi. way, so it's fine. He'll get a move on. We love him. Oh. Jay Sin Park. <laughs> yes, yes, dear. Classic movie you wish you could go back in and star in without any like cultural diversity, anything. The Goonies. Yes. Nice. What role would you be? That's my favorite movie of all time. What, where, mm. what role would you be? I know. You know, I want to be every role, but obviously <laughs> I want... Not Corey Feldman. <laughs> 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 I, obviously, I want to be Carrie Green. I mean, she's the love interest that, you know, with Josh Brolin. I. That's so funny uh, that you that's your choice. This? I, yeah. <laughs> Does that age me? I, no. That's no. my favorite movie all t of all time. I feel like checking all the boxes, adventure, romance, you know, everything. But do you know how sweet you are? You didn't choose a film like Norma Desmond and Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> you picked an ensemble yeah. film, oh, which thank God. like yeah. Friends from College is yeah. so ensemble and only works because like you said, there are no divas on the set. Well, it's no asshole, no asshole. Right? No asshole. No asshole policy. Well, we need a little. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> and, and less uh, less lines to learn. Yeah. I mean, my, my goal is to, do you make the most amount of money with the least amount of work? That's awesome. <laughs> that's my Beautiful goal. Thing right there. Working towards <laughs> greatness. <laughs> yeah. I feel you like could pay me a hundred dollars to play Hamlet uh, in like Guadalajara, and I'll mm, do it just mm -hmm. to like do the role. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting. I think mm -hmm. she's our new bestie. No offense. <laughs> can I be the co-host? Yes, time? absolutely. I, I don't want to. Absolutely, you're we here. We can do it together. No, you're here. We're yeah, doing it. We're here. Absolutely. My show's only going to be co-host. It's actually just turning into this. <laughs> because I read about that you love organic and you do like organic facial stuff, strangest guilty pleasure you have? Ooh, good question, Alexander. I love that. The strangest guilty pleasure? 
Like something that might not That's be so, so not healthy our, within exactly. your routine of greatness that you already do with oh everything God. organic. Um, I love French fries. Me too. Does that? That's my thing that too. actually would be, yeah, fat, because fat I wouldn't expect. Fat burger French fries. Yeah, me the too. The skinny, skinny ones. Skinny the skinny fries. fries. That's my me too and the Impossible the, Burger. Yeah. Put it on up. I there just it said is. The Impossible Burger. For your first like, time? Yes. They made the Impossible so Pizza good. now at Fresh Brothers. It's a pizza yes. form now. I know. We're gonna, it's all right, so good. you guys I'm picked with the most boring fries in the fast No, no, they're so good. I just fell asleep at your fries. They're so good. They're so, so good. No, so good. The skinny fries. Are Real so fast, good. We're, we're gonna just your favorite French fry. You have a favorite <laughs> French fry. I mean, I go for sweet potato fries. Oh, there it is. I like Chick, Chick Fil A fries. Chick Fil A fries are really good. Oh, waffle fries. fries. Yeah, good. yeah it's so good. Oh, the oh, fries, fries, fries are so good. good. <laughs> Remember, I'm from Atlanta, and that's where the Chick Fil A is. Now we're done talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Jay Sue, this is actually from one of your funny fans. I wonder if they knew you. Uh, worst gift that Randall has ever given to you. <laughs> <laughs> a gift. The worst gift. That you're just like, oh, God, he tried, but God, this is <laughs> oh not God. what I something You know, I um, This is actually, I love this question, by the way. The thing way. is, uh, Randall is, ve is very, very good at gifting because we decided about five years ago that we would pick out our gifts. Smart. That's a good idea. Right? No, no. That's what I my know. family does it's at every so time. Like, what do you want? It's Let's so get you this. unromantic, yeah. but it's so my family fun. does the same thing. You never have to return that. it, though. So yeah. what you want, unromantic. Yeah. You guys, I don't care about what the gift is. I love the opening it and just that that Being person knew me that wow. And that moment of disappointment. And that moment of disappointment. Give me the gift of a good script. That's what it is. I know it's it. I know it's so unromantic. Like I said, we just celebrated our ninth year because it's tomorrow so we just had it on sat on saturday so that's a, every like birthday anniversary that's we just actually really pick out sweet. our own gifts totally. and we just say and he'll be like what do you want and i'll be like what do you want and then we'll just go shopping <laughs> but then what's like, the point though because no. you're getting what you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. Thank you. Guess Thank what? You. Both of you guys can afford whatever you want. <laughs> well, it's all about... ABC, Netflix, money. <laughs> it's about Money's. that instant gratification. It's, that it's instant. all about we care about you, so we don't want you to we take you that to time take to return it. it. Yeah, I don't want to go back to Azara and wait in line we for, you know... We don't need you to go yeah. to Fred Siegel and right. return that over, like, expensive Oh, because the line thing. for Fred Siegel is out the door of things <laughs> To be fair, the cafe is so delicious. Delicious at Fred Siegel, though, so okay, I would go back. Yeah. You guys Kurt, is literally sorry, is sorry, sweating. Sorry, okay. sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> after day of filming ritual that you just like, I need this for myself after a full shoot day. What do I do? Yep. A um, glass of wine and Queer Eye. Bam. Done. Shouldn't, shouldn't we be part of queer Red or white or rosé? Oh, that's a you good question. Rosé, do you? Well. Oh, you do? I love it's okay to love <laughs> rosé. No, no, no. It's okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a big... I'm red, organ Pinot Noir. That's how I roll. Delicious. Mm. I love a nice Pinot That's Noir. What, what I, I hated roll. about the wine tasting episode was that there was so much red wine because I, I yeah. would not have done that. Although I drink white, and that's why I can drive. Right, exactly. <laughs> so well, that you line break is, the air conditioner. I just, I don't want to say this uh, on air because like my mom is listening, but like I've been that person. Like, oh yeah, I only yeah. have white. I can drive. Yeah. <laughs> like that's such a horrible. But like I've no, said terrible, that before. Yeah. I've white said wine that before. Is, like I've had white. Yeah. White wine is the oatmeal for Liza Minnelli. Uh, worst <laughs> red carpet question, and I saw many of your red carpet interviews in preparing for this. So. What was my worst answer? That's what I asked no, you. No, no, no. You tell me. What is the worst question you've been asked on the red carpet? Oh, I'm stressed. Oh God, I don't, I don't remember because I was probably too drunk. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go rewatch. So I was gonna be like, <laughs> I don't, I honestly, I don't, I don't remember if it's a terrible question because, I mean, honestly, you guys I, have been asked like. Asians in Hollywood, how does well, that feel? It's like, you know, it feel good. <laughs> like, what do they want you to say? I know, I mean, that that's that's the thing. I think that when you're a, an ethnic actor, uh, you'll always get questions about diversity. I that's, mean, that's, that's just true. the yeah. way. Mm. And what do, what do you say to that? I mean, they'll be like, crazy rich Asians, what did you think? <laughs> you know, what are, we, what are we supposed to say to that? Um, I got I questions emailed, though, and I was like, I'm not It's a very funny movie, though, to be fair. It's it was. Movie. I saw it twice right, already. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, 
so I have an Asian on, so I have to ask that? Like, that doesn't mm-hmm. even make sense. Yeah. I'm Latino. Should I ask myself how to cook a tortilla? No, I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's a thing. I think you just have to expect it. And I, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> just rise above it. Expect it. And know I love tortillas, happening. so. <laughs> I can make the best Panda Express tortilla. <laughs> <by the> <laughs> If you ever date me and we get really hungover, the next morning is going to be uh, orange chicken wrapped in a uh, burrito. Oh, it's my God. Oh my There's nothing With the good rice, it's so good. Sounds. All right, Kurt. Well, I, oh, I swear to, to God. Me. Oh, my God. He's like, oh, my God. You guys, uh, and where can people find you on your one outlet? Oh, my God. Um, the one. <laughs> <laughs> I just joined Instagram. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna help you out with the Instagram. Yeah, we're so gonna, we, a lot we're of gonna follow you from now on. He, all he has want. to do is shout you out once on Got his goddamn yeah, page, yeah. and you'll get I'm, some freaking follow. As long as yeah. you follow me, I guess. I'm yeah. super <laughs> excited uh, at the. Jay Sue Park. Ooh, my the, yeah. the, See, the, the, here's the thing though, you're already expecting greatness because you time. already have the the in I front of it. I have to say, there's many smart. competitions. I'm like, smart. she's an old grandma Did you, in, did you tell her to do the, 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 the No, the, that's smart. not her. Smart, well, so smart. I, I was going to make it at Josh Murray 11, but <laughs> <laughs> it was already taken. It was so weird. Wait, I love <laughs> I love that Josh Murray needs an 11. <laughs> the 11. Like, what is the I know. Not even for? Josh it's Murray It's my lucky one. number. It's oh my lucky my. number. Why is it your lucky number? There's also 20 other Josh Murray. When I was a little kid, I a couple grand slams back to back, and it was just my number. I was the youngest one on the team, and they just gave me 11. I loved it since. So oh then man. I passed it down wow. to the family. Yeah. His sexiness, he's just like, he doesn't even so try. So we, we we, <laughs> before we leave, though, when are you guys are going to take your shirts off now, though, right? Uh, no. Just for us oh. really fast? Oh. No? Oh, okay, it's, yeah. It's, okay. Kurt, I'm so <laughs> sorry. It's happening. Right? Everybody you does. can find out on my Instagram, then. <laughs> you if you follow me, you'll find out on Instagram. It's there. Oh, right. It's there. Oh, that's probably Well, Chris, I've seen many shirtless. I didn't sweat over too much. Mm. I did. Thank you. I appreciate uh, Aaron, that. Please tell people where they can listen because you're actually on our same day. I am. My show is on Tuesdays at, at 4 p.m. It's called Listen, Sweetie. So I do double duty here on Tuesdays now with Alexander for, for whenever he's too busy being a, a rock star somewhere else. Um, he's taking the show over on Tuesday when I'm in fashion yeah. week. And you can follow me on Twitter at Eric Restivo or uh, my Instagram is at Settle Down Eric. Settle down, yeah, Eric. Is down. Down. Settle you settle down. guys, what another fun show! And this is how you know when we first like sat down, we're like, "God, we're so different. How are we gonna do this show?" And then, boom, boom, boom! This is how it works. This is great. Thanks how how I other. love it. I love being in the show. It's a blast. Also, thank you guys to your uh, PR reps. I can't name them because it's competition, but <laughs> <laughs> honestly, they do well, they amazing look, jobs. They look great. <laughs> they do. They look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are Sitting amazing. right here. Yeah. Judgment, we give them judgmental props. as always. Yes. Always. Fingers respect. They're like, Legs. don't mad at me from this lab. They're like, <laughs> Alexander, I have notes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then represent me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kurt. Oh, God. He's stressing. God. <laughs> Thank you, UBN. What an amazing place. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> This has been On the Rocks with Alexander, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on Universal Broadcasting Network. Find me on Facebook on On the Rocks Radio Show. Tweet me or Instagram me at On the Rocks On Air. See you next Tuesday!